Great to have your company and welcome to the Bolivar Raceway, located 10 kilometres north of Adelaide in South Australia. And the internationally aligned Junior Intercontinental A-Class has attracted a great field of 15 of Australia's best young talents to compete for the first round of the national championship. And with last year's top three place getters all moving up to the Senior Intercontinental A-Class, the junior category is now wide open with any number of drivers capable of taking victory. And you're about to see the final of the Bob Jane t -Mart's Junior Intercontinental A, a 23-lap journey here at the Bolivar Raceway. And starting on pole is Neil McFadden from New South Wales in cart number 59. Beside him, Jamie Carter, then Cameron Thorpe, Tim Moylan, Ricky Ocapinti, Tim Slade, Marcus Liddell, James Harrigan down in position number eight. And rounding out the top ten, Ben Hall and also Andrew Hobby starting out of position number ten in cart number 18. I'm joined in commentary by none other than Australia's most successful carter in this era, James Courtney from Castle Ray in New South Wales, dual world champion. Good to see you, James. Thanks. The junior class is actually the only cl class with a clutch, so they have a standing start. Indeed, and uh, we have the action underway here at the Bolivar Raceway in front of a very good crowd, and fortunately all through the first corner safely. Always a difficult stage of proceedings, the, the race for the first corner. Yeah, you've got to take it pretty easy in the start, just calm down and the race is won in the end. Tell us a bit about these carts as they sort themselves out early in the race. Um, well, they're, they're, the weight for the class is about 130. Uh, the cost is pretty high. It's probably about six grand for the whole setup, and that's where you start. Still a relatively inexpensive form of motorsport, though. Jamie Carter from South Australia is our early race leader. That's him right in the centre of your screen, cart number 25. He's got a pretty handy break at this stage of proceedings. A good battle for the minor placings, and you're watching... The final in the first round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship for 1998 and the Junior Intercontinental A class sponsored by Bob Jane T-Marts. And already Jamie Carter, James Courtney, is really showing them the way home. Cameron Thorpe is second, card number 33, and he certainly has a battle on his hands. A number of drivers applying the pressure to him, including Neil McFadden, who was our pole sitter in cart number 59 and this really reflects exactly what karting is all about close hard and fast racing doesn't look like he's going to be there for much longer they're pretty much all over the back of him tim moylan runs fourth and there's a move up on the inside another real feature of karting is the amount of overtaking in fact we had a, quite a number of passes happening there all in the same sequence a replay up the inside meantime our race leader jamie carter whilst that battle is continuing continues to clear out mcfadden up into second and a good move there by james harrigan in cart 14 also up now running in the top three what you got to try and do when you pass on you got to try and hold them on the outside to balk them so then you get a bit of a gap and they don't pass you back that's the man in second mcfadden driver of 59 and he has a, a slight break on james harrigan a new south welshman there's harrigan now in cart 14 and he finds himself under siege from James Small, who started from position 14, so he's made outstanding progress. This racetrack in North Adelaide at Bolivar, a tricky one, one that the drivers have to concentrate very hard on. Lots of twists and turns, and as you can see from that shot, there's one or two gutters and curves around the place as well. Jamie Carter looks to be throwing the cart around a lot. So that's not. That's not really a good sign. You're wearing out the tyres and get everything hot. So I think Neil McFadden might be passing him pretty soon. Yes, the leader's traction on the racetrack. Not quite as good as it was. Here's McFadden now looking for an inside slingshot and finds it too. Nice inside pass. Very quickly, though, Carter responds as we take a look at the replay. Typical example of slipstreaming James Courtney as McFadden moves down onto the inside. As you see, when they're covering the airbox, that's just to give the engine a bit more fuel than normal and tends to keep it a bit cooler and so you have a bit more power in the end of the race. So now the New South Welshman, Neil McFadden, who did qualify on pole as a result of his finish in the pre-final, continues now to lead this one. I just wonder whether Carter has got what it takes James to come back. I'm talking about mechanically speaking, because clearly that he is struggling with the handling characteristics of the car at the moment. I don't think he'll be passing Neil back. It looks like he's, Neil's already pulled away a bit. So I think Pretty he'll be staying where he is for a while. Fairly long gap now. Back to third and fourth on the racetrack. So far, they've been able to negotiate the 750-metre Bolivar Raceway without any problems at all. And a very important step forward for karting. This wins Australian National Championship to be conducted over four rounds. 
great to see the sport on television where it belongs. He was actually just then when you saw him with the carburetor, he's just probably opening the, the mixture a little just to keep the engine a bit cooler so it doesn't break. James Small in card number three. It's been quite a phenomenal performance by him. That's the driver I refer to on the left-hand side of your screen, the blue cart. Now running up the straight part of, this, of the circuit. He started from position number 14 to be up running third. It's a great effort. He's obviously got the chassis and engine combination pretty well sorted out. It looks to be going quite well. Ben Harrigan runs fourth. Harrigan, the driver of cart number 14. And not really a race where we've seen what is so typical of karting with packs of drivers all scouting for positions and jostling. They've really spread out now like an Indian scouting party. Yeah, it would be a little more exciting if they all slowed up and <laughs> made a bit more of a race of it. But Have you uh, driven many times at this circuit, Bolivar? Yeah, I've actually raced there a few times. It's a good track to race on. There's a combination of slow and fast corners. Uh, makes for good racing. You'd be delighted as we watch the action here uh, with your career so far. Junior world champion in 1995, Formula A world champ in 1997. And you race in Italy, America, Japan and Europe. So you have a pretty good lifestyle. Most 17 year olds will be fairly envious of you. Yeah, it's not too bad. I get to see a fair bit of the world. But when we're in the other countries, we only see the track and the hotel and on the way to the track. So you don't get to see much of it. Life's tough, isn't it? We're watching James Small still running third in this 23 lap Bob Jane T. Mart Jr. Intercontinental A final round one of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. That's that's small on the right hand side of your picture. Neil McFadden looks like he's just driving away with this one. Yeah, he's uh, he's gone and a fairly big gap now between the race leader McFadden and the driver in second spot, James Carter. That's Carter now, the yellow machine. And if anything, we might see James Small starting to close somewhat. He may have time to challenge for second on the racetrack. What Neil would be trying to do now is just keep everything cool and keep the cart straight so he finishes in front. It's all about self-preservation, isn't it? Certainly Looking is. after your tyres and everything that counts. Race is one in the end of the race. People that haven't driven these carts, James, uh, underestimate the, the physical torture. You've got to be super fit. It's very difficult. Yeah, there's actually, as you can see, the black line, which is rubber, and it the steering tends to get pretty heavy, so you have to have pretty big, uh, or not pretty big arms, but you have to have a fair bit of fitness. You do indeed. James Small continues to make progress. He's certainly got his sights set on Jamie Carter, who runs second, the South Australian race leader. He is a long, long way in front. I refer to Neil McFadden, who won the pre-final by virtue of that, was able to secure pole position for this Bob Jane T-March Junior Intercontinental A final. And uh, after being blown away at the start by Jamie Carter, McFadden was able to slowly but surely chip away, take the lead. And he's now, barring mechanical failure, a certainty to get home in this one. I think James Small is catching him uh, a little. So that Jamie Carter, so that's pretty good. I agree with you. There's a, a slight off by the man running in fourth position, James Harrigan. Another replay, another look at it. Can happen fairly easily. So now he'll be losing time for a few corners with the dirt he's got on his tyres, so I think he'll be dropping back a bit now. He'll spend a lap cleaning them off, won't he? Yeah. Nice shot of James Harrigan at work in the office. That also is a nice shot of James Small, who it really has been the driver of the race, starting from position number 14. And he's closing, closing the gap on the man in second, Jamie Carter. You just caught a glimpse of Carter at the top of the screen in the yellow cart. It looked like he'd gone off a little bit because there was a bit of dust around when he came around. So. This track's got a bit of everything, hasn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's really good to drive on. It's got the straights pretty long, which get a bit of speed up, which is good. Well, this is where the focus of our attention really has to be. James Small closing the gap appreciably on Jamie Carter in second. Then a long way back to James Harrigan. That's Harrigan now on screen after having a slight off a lap and a half ago. Perfect weather conditions here in Adelaide at the Bolivar Raceway. Temperature just about perfect for karting at championship level. There's Small still third. There's no doubt he's catching the man in second fairly quickly. They'd only now be separated by about 10 metres, which isn't a lot in a precision sport like this. One mistake by Jamie Carter, and Small will be in his lap. Yeah, he looks to be going pretty well, so that should be pretty good. He has to be 
just keeps his head and concentrates, so that should be really good. We're on the last lap now, and uh, that means that Neil McFadden, our race leader, only has a few corners to negotiate before he gets home and wins the Bob Jane T. Marts Jr. Intercontinental A final in round number one of the Wins Championship here at Bolivar Raceway. The battle is still intense between James Small and Jamie Carter. There's the gap you can see. And there is the checkered flag for our winner, Neil McFadden from New South Wales. Second of the checkered flag just will be Jamie Carter from South Australia and then James Small from Victoria. Finishing third in what was, I think, the drive of the race. But a great performance by Neil McFadden, who in the end proved far too good. Yeah, it looks like he had everything sorted out. He did quite well. Drove away from the, the field, so that was quite good. He should be pretty happy with it. That's the side all drivers behold. A replay of the chequered flag, particularly when you've been the driver to take it first. Nice to have your company as we welcome you back to the Bolivar Raceway in South Australia. On this occasion, it's the final of the Cardos Magazine Intercontinental A. And the grid looks this way for you. Jamie Wincup in the cart number six will start from pole. Brendan Dive from New South Wales beside him on the front row. Matthew Wall and Michael Caruso sharing the second row. Then Alan Gerr, Brendan May, positions five and six. Chris Prestige out of seven and Barclay Holden out of eight. And then Paul Dumbrell and David Koch alone rounding out the top 10 in this 39 lap journey. There's a wind cup right hand side oh. of the screen. Oh, a little bit of nonsense happening there. In fact, this will be a false start. A couple of drivers going around sideways, sideways and Chris Prestige was one of them in 76. I'm joined by Jill World Champion James Courtney. It's not too good driving over the ripple strip like that. It tends to bend a few things and things like that. So that's not a good sign. No, and a frustrating way for those drivers to embark on their first really big final of the season in the Wins Australian Karting Championship. And we're going to get them back underway and hopefully good move there won't down be the too inside. many problems. Yeah, good move there on the inside. And Jamie Wincup is the man they've certainly got to catch. He's been super consistent, but it's interesting to note that the times they've been recording have been very very competitive all in the mid 34s when i say all of them certainly that applies to the top five on the grid anyway these cuts are actually quite a bit faster than the last race you saw which uh these are the drivers aged between 15 to whatever so it's quite good this class it's very competitive they certainly are quick we've got a red flag out and uh, the officials oh, oh problem at the back of the pack there someone has stood on the anchors once they've seen the red flag which you may have called slightly premature. There's the replay for you. And, well, Ooh. there's carts and arms and legs going everywhere. That's got to hurt. <laughs> it's not a good situation to be in. Well, when you see the red flag, it does mean stop, doesn't it? But not necessarily yeah, you, within half a second. You tend to turn around and have a look what's going on behind you and slow down gradually, not just straight away. So we've got major problems here at the Bolivar Raceway in the Cardoz Magazine Intercontinental A final. He won't be feeling too good after that one. Fortunately, all the drivers emerged unscathed. Just a few bumps and bruises and uh, a bit of confidence dented that Jamie Wincup from Victoria is going to lead them away in yet another restart to this race. Yeah, they tend to be pretty competitive and they want to get underway so they get a little rowdy, but they're off now. Brendan Divers. Done as his surname has indicated. He's dived down on the inside and taken the lead from Wind Cup. So a change of lead. It's dive ahead of Wind Cup. Next man on the racetrack is Matthew Hall, who started out of position three on the grid. And good close racing up front between dive and Wind Cup. You get the feeling this will go right down to the wire. In typical karting fashion, you'll see all rounds of the Winds Australian Karting Championship televised right here throughout 1998. I've actually raced against Brendan Dive a few times. He, I think he's one of the better Australian drivers. So I think Jamie Wincup's going to have his hands full trying to get past him. How many other young Australians uh, is there on the way up in the world of karting at the moment? Uh, well, there's always young talent coming through. So there's actually two more Australians racing overseas with me. Good battle. Brendan Dive in 15. Jamie Wincup, cart number six. And Wincup is really riding rough shot and now moves Ooh. up the inside there wasn't a lot in that gets a slipstream i Indeed. think they outbreak each other <laughs> Cuts, uh, both of them having an attitude as they prepared for the left hand corner it's actually a bit of a touch there 
Exactly. Guys lost a bit of time. You'd call it a racing incident, though. Nothing malicious. Yeah. <laughs> that all sounds all right anyway. That's what the drivers will say. Win Cup now has a gap of about two metres to, to dive. Best of that battle is uh, Alan Gurr, the New South Welshman, the battle for fourth, fifth and six. As we see Matthew Wall racing through and you're watching the highlights of the Cardoz magazine, Intercon and LA. Does final. actually drop back to third now, so maybe he's having some sort of mechanical problems. The fluctuating fortunes of motorsport. There's Wind Cup in front, second. In 89 is Brendan May, good job by him. Started out of position six. And he has second safely in his keeping at the moment, although we'll feel the pressure shortly. Brendan May is one of the younger drivers coming through. He's won a few Australian championships, so he's not too shabby on the driving side. And showing that prowess here. Always an interesting challenge in any motorsport when you run second, when you're close enough to be pouncing on the leader and at the same time you're conscious of someone that's going to challenge you from behind. You've just got to put your head down and do your best. Win Cup leader, May in second. And that's Dive back in third who did lead early in this race. 39 lap final. That's, that's Dive, New South Welshman. So we've got a Victorian up front. It's Michael Caruso, the boy that won the Australian Junior Championship last year, which is the class, the class that you just saw before. So and Caruso um, being tapped from behind by Adam Gill in 71. It's like he's going quite good in his first race. Oh! oh! They've had a bit of a touch. Gill went by on the outside. The other driver wasn't expecting it. He spins midway through Ooh. the corner. Well, there's not a lot you can do about that, is there? Michael Caruso, I just don't think he expected him to be on the outside. Not really, and I wouldn't like to be sitting at the end of the straight there. They're going quite quick there. Yeah, and that's where there's a bit of loose stuff on the racetrack as well. The marbles as it's called. Meantime, Wind Cup still leads. I think Paul Dumbrell managed to get past after that accident. Yeah. Quite good. Well, we have seen some action in this one. Bit of carnage, but <laughs> it's always good to watch. Some attrition. Not good to watch if you're the bloke paying the bills, though, is it? Not really. It tends to get a little on the expensive side. Indeed. So Wind Cup, the Victorian. A long way in front now in this race as we drift back and look at the battle further back in the pack you can see the black line there visibly at uh, this stage of the day they've all laid down sufficient rubber to come up with a real racing groove highlighted by the black the blackness of the track another example of the body contact <laughs> that does happen in karting that uh, on that occasion trying to move up the inside was Alan Gurr from New South Wales and he found the found the curb and now Matthew Wall in five we're watching him battle away with Gurr in 20 Matthew Wall's using the CRG chassis and CRG engines Alan, Alan Gurr's using uh, top car chassis and Ro Rotax engines so it'll be interesting to see which combination is the better at the end of the race both drivers hailing from New South Wales so no love loss between them fighting for to be the first New South Welshman, so it should be good. Well, it's all about the Victorian Wind Cups in front, out of uh, camera shot at the moment. But we still focus on this battle between Wall and also Gurr. Alan Gurr seems to be having a bit of understeer going into the corner, so that's not a good sign early on in the race. 39 lap final, and uh, had three attempts at starting the race. You can see the, the remnants of that action with carts all over the place a couple there parked on the on the grass hopefully the understeer problem won't slow him down too much but the other cart seems to be pulling away a bit so Gurr still chases Matthew Wall love the sound of these carts they really do scream yeah the engines are revving to about 20,000 revs so they they tend to get hot that's why they're choking the engines where you see them put their hand in front of the engines they're covering the intake which allows fuel to go in there which cools them down each time i think when you choke it's about 20 degrees it drops straight away so it's quite good to do that great example of what you were just saying by alan gurr that's wall blasting past our camera that that's good now 
sponsored uh, by Konica. And he leans forward as he heads up the straight. He's trying to find every ounce of horsepower to close the gap. It's been an absorbing battle, this one. But right now, Wall has the best of it. No looks, doubt about it. He looks like he could be struggling a little bit now because Wall tends to be pulling away a bit. There's the driver of 15, Brendan Dive, who is running in the top three on the racetrack after leading early in this event. And another example there, right hand over the air intake, as was described by James Courtney, our dual world karting champion. Joining us as special guest co-commentator for this opening round of the Wins Championship at Bolivar Raceway. As Dive. You can, as you can see, Brendan's using uh, Burrell chassis and Perilla engines, which is tends to be a good chassis. That's Brendan May, we're now looking at. 89, running second. I think Brendan's and using the Merlin and Atomic engines. There's Jamie Wincup, James. He's the leader and he's on his last lap of this 750 metre. It's always nervous on the last lap, hoping nothing breaks. And it's also the longest lap of the whole race. Yeah, you hear every little noise the engine makes. Don't you ever, and it just seems to take forever to see that chequered flag. But he's certainly going to do it, Jamie Wincup. It's been a, a fine drive by the Victorian who consolidated his lead after being involved in an early dice with Brendan Dive and has certainly asserted his superiority here in the Cardoz Magazine Intercontinental A Final. And check and flag now on display. It was a very comprehensive victory by Win Cup from May and Dive. And welcome back to the Bolivar Raceway in North Adelaide and really looking forward to the next event. This is the final of the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A class. The elite on the program today and uh, Lodinsky from Queensland will lead them away on pole. David Clark starting out of position two. Gary Dan, Mark Winterbottom, Nick Aglin, Malcolm Heath, Steve Maher and Wesley May. That is the top seven on the grid for you. Then Joshua Pontello, Tyson Pierce and Jeremy Lohman rounding out the top ten. Drivers now busily trying to warm their tyres. I'm joining commentary for this opening round of the Wins Championship by dual Australian karting world champion James Courtney. What a great field here. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty good. There's a lot of names that I used to race against, and this is actually the class that I won the last World Championship in, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. Our driver on pole, Lodzinski, has really dominated proceedings, winning the qualifying heats and the pre-final, and as such is certainly the man to beat here. We're set for action in this final of the Formula A. And it was David Clark, the West Australian, that got the best start, swept around the outside. And these carts look like an angry swarm of bumblebees as they head through the first couple of corners. James Courtney. It looks like uh, Mark Winterbottom's in second place and he's won a few Australian championships, so he's pretty experienced. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the front here. Yeah, Winterbottom now chasing our early race leader, David Clark. They're separated by a metre on the racetrack, if that. And then third and best of the rest is Lodzinski, who started on pole and really just was found wanting at the start. The cart really sat down, didn't uh, maintain the pace or find the pace that the other carts did. And subsequently, after dominating proceedings so far all weekend, has got a lot of work to do. Uh, David Clark is using a Merlin chassis, which is Italian, which is quite good. And also Mark Winterbottom is using a Tony cart, which is what I use overseas. And They've won a few world championships, so they're not too shabby. You know, Tony can't really, these days, regarded as the ones to have, aren't they? Yeah, they're actually a really good chassis. They're made in Italy, in Brescia, and I think they're quite expensive also. Well, you'd know, as we see David Clark really at the front of an absorbing tussle here. Oh. Potential challenge being issued on the inside. It was not to be, though. Ooh. It was Winterbottom had a look. And another driver here going motocrossing. Thank you very much. Steve Ma, the Victorian, bottoming out on the curb and found himself half a metre off the racetrack, which isn't fun. Tends to get a little exciting when you're in the air. <laughs> a little out of control, too. We've got a terrific battle here for the top three placings. David Clark has the best of the battle for the moment. Winter bottom, looking up the inside. And now also joining in is Lodzinski. It was only really a matter of time before he found his way back up front after the domination. Ooh, Ooh yeah, there was a... Just cut him off. A risque move from Winterbottom. He almost had a sore bottom. I think Slipstreaming could come in to play in this race with them this close. Lodzinski also moves up one more spot. And uh, Winterbottom 
racing under the wind's banner in this national championship. Team very, very professional too, I've got to say. It's probably one of the top ca t uh, karting teams in Australia. So it's good he's driving for them. So once again, we find our bearings back up front. Whilst all that battling's been happening, it's enabled uh, David Clark, the West Australian race leader, to move away somewhat. Lodzinski, you'd expect him to keep coming and keep coming. And that certainly is the case now as he runs a very close second to the race leader. I think uh, David Clark won the Australian Championship last year, so he knows what he's doing out in front. Lodzinski will test him. Oh, almost contact there. Lodzinski up the inside. Nice move. Can the other driver respond, David Clark? Let's take another look at it. What you try and do is hold the, the outside driver on the, on the outside for the longest, and then they, you balk them out of the corner, so then you pull the gap. Keep them out on the marbles. That's what you tend to try and do. Lodzinski now, the change of lead up front. Stephen Ma looks to be catching them as well. David Clark, let's see how he can respond. The West Australian, who started from position two on the grid here, on the outside of Lodzinski. And he had things very much his own way for a long time, so it'll test his capabilities here to see if he can come back at the man who has dominated this Formula A category throughout the weekend. And this is the final you're watching of the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway, a fantastic new complex which has recently opened. They're sponsoring the Formula A action at Bolivar Raceway this afternoon. Steve Maher looks like he's caught up a lot in the last lap. It's right behind him now. Lodzinski has cleared out. Clark is second. And uh, as called by our dual world champ and co-commentator today, James Courtney, Steve Maher, in that beautifully turned out red cart, number 89, looking very smooth too and quite aggressive. Oh, he pulls out. Down on the inside. Clark had a look there. Yep, and him. it's happened. Clark responds but doesn't have the racing line. Yeah, he's sliding the cart to slow it down. Seems you're braking very late and... When the car hits the rubber, it, top, it stops pretty quick. Good drive by Ma, started well back in position six. And we have seen a lot of passing. Another good job here by Winterbottom, who's made some ground after a couple of early moments. Looks like he's pulled a bit of a gap now and looks to be throwing the chassis around a bit, so that's not too good. Hopefully the tyres will hang in for the last few laps. So Lodzinski is the leader, Ma is second, Clark is third. And you'll find Ooh. the next driver on the racetrack is Winterbottom. Clark has taken second back again with a no big pardons move. And that also means Winterbottom has challenged for third on the racetrack. So Mars having a nightmare drive out there at the moment. He left the door open too, didn't he? Yeah, pretty much. And for the next one, seems Mark had the better run around the corner. He passes him on the inside. Oh, but he's, Steve Mars got back past uh, Mark Winterbottom. Well, this is a great battle. And of course, James, whilst all this is happening, the leader is being left alone in front. Lodzinski, he can dictate his own terms. Because obviously when you're battling with one another like this, you are slowing yourself down. Yeah, you do slow down quite a bit. And for the leader, it's really good because now he's just looking behind and checking out what's happening and he sees that they're dicing. So he's just choking and keeping everything really cool so it stays together for the race. Here comes Mara again. Inside move, slides the cart to slow himself down and is successful in taking second on the racetrack back again. Pretty much identical to what he's done before, except it was a little bit more tidy. Yeah, almost a carbon copy of the last time he was able to pass Clark successfully. Well, you could throw a tally ho paper over this trio, couldn't you? A terrific carb race in the Formula A final. Forget about the leader, Lodzinski. He's a mile in front. But this is Ma, followed by Clark and Winterbottom, and there's nothing between this three. And they're battling for second, third, and fourth. You can see a pass. Yes, there it is. Ooh, Clark inside. Oh, it's close. Ma turned back in, was hoping to duck back up the inside. Another look at it. Yeah. I think Ma tries to come back on the inside, but then there's a right-hand corner, so he's on the wrong side. Exactly. Yeah, the idea was good, but the execution not necessarily <laughs> there. And the layout of the track, meaning it was not conducive to uh, launching a serious threat. But Zinski is the race leader in this Formula A category at the first round of the Winds Australian Karting Championship. Hope you've enjoyed all the action and you'll see it all right here in 1998, four rounds. And we'll bring you the information in relation to the second round. It will be held on June 21 at the Willow Bank venue in Queensland, which should prove to be outstanding racing. Lodzinski leader, Clark second.
My food. I think it'll be a very boring race for Wazinski out in front. You hear every noise the engine makes and just praying that nothing breaks. But uh, the race will be going very quickly for the other three. There's the gap. That shot graphically illustrated the lead that Lodzinski is able to enjoy. The action Ooh. continues. Ma up the inside of Clark. Clark was successful in fending off the challenge. Gee, it looked from this angle as though he was going to get there, didn't it? Yep, but uh, obviously he's backed out in the last minute. When you try and make a pass, you've got to be confident in that you're going to make it and then just bang, make it. You can't go hesitating, otherwise you don't get it. So he'll learn from his mistakes. It all happens so quickly. And uh, for the uninitiated watching our program, James, the top speed of these carts as we watch Ma having another go at Clark. What sort of speeds will these machines get up to? Uh, they're probably doing... The straight doesn't look like it's all that long, so they're probably doing about maybe 120, 125. So it's quite fast for a 100cc engine. Unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, sitting that close Ooh. to the ground, it feels like a million kilometres an hour. Winterbottom's just got past Ma on the inside. He has. Ma just getting a little bit untidy now. Bearing in mind he had to work his way up from uh, a fair way back on the grid, position six. He may have used up all his tyres at this point, James. He is starting to look a little sloppy. Yeah, it looks like the chassis is tending to slide a bit now, so that's not a very good sign. And as you can see on the front wheel, it's a little dark on the inside, on the tyre, and that, and that shows that the tyre's graining up which means that it's understeering. So that tends to slow you down in the middle of the corner and washes all your speed off, so then your exit isn't very good. Whilst we've uh, got you with us in commentary this weekend, I've got to ask you, having won two world championships already, still just 17, where is your future? Where do you see yourself heading in motor racing? Um, well, I'll be doing having a Formula 3 test in two years, which if that all goes well... Oh! Winner bottoms bottom. off the track. I think his engine's just broken. I reckon you're right, because it came from nowhere. Another look at it. Yeah, he just yep. really pulled off the racetrack. And uh, that enables Ma and certainly Clark to <laughs> relax for a while because it's been a, a battle that's been going on lap after lap. That's not a good feeling when you come out of the corner and the engine just breaks and then you watch, watch all your hard work just drive away with the other two in the race. So. Now, Wesley, Wesley May has moved up now as a result of the unfortunate demise of Winterbottom. Uh, Lodzinski continues to lead the Queenslander. Then it's Clark, then Ma, then May. May's actually using a new chassis, which is called an energy chassis. That's uh, made in Italy like most of the other chassis. And I've raced against Wesley many times, and he's quite a close friend of mine. Is there any friends out on the racetrack? Yeah, but when you get on the racetrack, you have no friends. They're all enemies. <laughs> so Ma finds himself under increasing pressure from Wesley May. That's May now. Silver livery cart number 39 this has been a highly enjoyable race to watch there's been plenty of action and here's some more for you as he takes it up the inside wesley may as you can see wesley's cart is a lot tidier and looks to be handling a lot better as you can see in the corners even though he's on the inside and braking late it's still turning in quite good so it's a really good sign for the endurance of the tires and things like that you know i just think you know even though he's doing a great job out there, Mars used up the best of his tyres. Yeah, I think Mars gone out hard in the start where the race is won in the end, where Wesley thought about that. Not all that far now to go in this, and you're watching the highlights of the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A final in the first round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship for 1998. Wesley May, we've got to pay tribute to him, started from position seven, so he's been patient has driven a very sensible race and is going to find himself on the podium and there's nothing wrong with that. I think Wodinski is kind of trying not to fall asleep out in front there. There's not much happening around him. He's just got to try and stay on the track. So. I think most drivers would prefer to be involved in a battle of sorts. Yeah, it tends to make the race go a lot quicker and things like that. It makes it a bit more interesting. Terminal boredom's uh, what he really needs to be concerned about now. I think he's actually slowing just a little bit, Lodzinski, because Clark is probably eating into the lead just slightly. The West Australian, that is Clark, he's second on the racetrack. And has done a good job in this, um, has kept himself tidy, hasn't panicked, led early. Has had plenty of people trying to swamp him, but has kept a clear head, hasn't he? Yeah, it's kind of difficult to drive from the front, because when you're in second, you have someone to chase, but when you're in the front, you have no one to chase, and it's hard to keep your concentration for the full length of the race when you have no one to race against. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see if he can 
keep the gap. If you may have just joined us, Ryan Lobzinski from Queensland leads the Formula A final. David Clark from Western Australia is second, and Wesley May from New South Wales is third. And that is Ma in the red cart. There's a nice illustration of the gap between the top runners on the racetrack as the camera panned slightly wider. And our leader, Lodzinski, has one lap of this 750-metre Bolivar raceway to negotiate. Ooh. And he'll take the chequered flag. Wesley seems to have, we, Wesley May seems to have caught him a lot, so maybe you might see a passing manoeuvre on the last lap. That's a scrap for second and third. Clark has the best of it. He's well aware of the fact that Wesley May is there. And it's been a barnstorming drive by May. Has been chipping away and finds himself in third with a real chance of pulling off second place here. Can he do it? You might try slipstreaming down the street. It will be fascinating to watch that battle unfold here. Meantime, Ryan Lodzinski has taken the chequered flag in the Formula A final. Going to find David Clark finishing in second ahead of Wesley May. Steve Ma finishing in fourth, the driver of cart number 89. And Malcolm Heath rounding out the top five in the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A final at the Wins Australian Karting Championship. A record entry of 23 drivers arrived at Ipswich to contest the second round of the Wins Australian Championship, competing in the Bob Jane t -Mart's Junior Intercontinental A class. After finishing third at the first round in Adelaide, Melbourne's James Small bounced back to form to take all three heat wins. Top car driver Neil McFadden managed to overhaul Small in the pre-final, taking the win to line up on pole position for the all-important 20-lap final. And let's now take a look at the grid for you. Starting on pole, Nick Fadden, as I've said. Beside him, James Small. On the second row, James Carter and Daniel Elliott. Jeffrey Grant and Kane Wright are sharing the third row of the grid. And what should be a very closely fought affair then, Lanham and Hall, Okapinti, Hobby, Bozanovsky and Johnson rounding out the top 12 on the grid. I'm joined in commentary by Ian Salvestrin, editor of Cart Oz Magazine, Australia's leading karting publication. Good to see you, Ian. A great field here. Yeah, thanks, David. It's um, the biggest field in the series history as James Small gets to the lead in the first corner. Um, they've been really competitive all weekend. It's going to be a great 20 lap final. Small getting an ideal start. Let's see if the drivers manage to negotiate the first few corners safely. Nice buck backdrop here at the Willow Bank Raceway in Queensland. A big field, big crowd all weekend. Driver of cart 59, Nick Fatten, up running second. There's another one running back in third. In fact, a number of them going off track momentarily. But the man settling down in front is Small. McFadden is now going to issue the challenge up on the inside. Nice piece of driving. Small now switches lines and takes the race right up to him. And this is really a thrilling opening lap to this Intercontinental A final. And let's see how it pans out now. It's Small, a marginal race leader. Yep, McFadden's tucked in behind him. Look back to third. That's West Australian Daniel Elliott driving the number 36 car in his first ever junior Intercontinental A race. Ben Hall back in fourth place. So some new drivers to the class doing really well here, but out front, uh, it's McFadden who's all over the back of Small. Very closely contested affair. The opening round to this event in Adelaide a couple of months ago was a spectacular success. Everyone involved in the sport of karting looking forward to the second round with no little expectation as Small in cart three continues to lead the Victorian in the arrow entry. To see Elliot back in third, has gone off on that same corner on the second lap again, but he's still holding on to third. McFadden tunes his engine down the straight, touching probably just over 100 kilometres an hour, and um, it's a strong fight already with still 18 laps to go at this 1100 metre circuit. This racetrack uh, appears to have just a little bit of everything from a driver's point of view. It must be very challenging as we continue to watch this battle up front with Small and McFadden. Yeah, it's an 1100 metre circuit, 15 corners. Uh, interesting to note later on in the Formula 8 class, uh, the fastest cars will be actually pulling in excess of 4 G-forces. So it just goes to show how competitive and how hard it is uh, in this class of racing. Fabulous race up front. Small maintains the race lead. McFadden is really serving it up to him. Jamie Carter from South Australia now starting to close in on Elliott as they make their way through the appropriately named chain break corner. Elliott holds on to third, but Carter's all over the back of him. And out front, it's McFadden, the first round winner, who's trying to get past Small. If you may have just joined us, you're watching the second round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. Now we see a great move up on the inside by McFadden. In fact, he executed that passing manoeuvre on exactly the same part of the racetrack as he did in, in the first lap. 
Oh, Small gives him a shunt there. Well, McFadden won't be too happy about that. In fact, Small's actually lost time in that. McFadden's pulled out just three cart lengths or so by Small uh, giving him the tap there. Small with his head down, actually driving the new Australian-made Arrow 8 6 chassis. McFadden in the top cart, sponsored by Skilled Engineering, in a cart made in Italy. Elliot in a Tony cart, and Carter also in a Mirage cart. That battle's just as good as the one up front. Another driver making good progress is in 44, Ben Hall, who started out of position eight. He's not that far behind. The driver's running third and fourth on the circuit. There's one being pushed out of harm's way. Looks like Marcus Liddell there. And Ty McFadden continues to lead this one. He may have just opened up the lead. Slightly over small. McFadden now waves his arms. There appears to be a problem. Looks like we might have a red flag situation. Yes, we do. Let's see what the problem is. Drivers will slow down, making a stop. And uh, there's been a nasty one. And that like is uh, Ricky Occapiti, the Victorian driver, and the Dino carts come to grief. And a bit of concern about him, but he'll be A-OK. -okay. Back to the race restart now. Green light shown once more. Of the glorious uncertainties of karting. Upon red flag conditions, you go back and do it all over again. <laughs> There's one very loose out in the dirt. And the driver I refer to in cart number nine managed to uh, gather it up again and get back on the black stuff. Yeah, that was Tony Dalberto, the Victorian. So with that restart, all those first four laps have counted for nothing. It looks as though we've got cart number two. That's Tim Slade from Adelaide trying to slot back into position. Yeah, so they're going to have to do it all again. Uh, those four, four, first four laps counting for nothing. McFadden in second place, chasing down small. Elliott's moved up into third again, a lot closer to the leaders this time round. And uh, he's really in contention for a win here. Small has really been the major beneficiary of that race restart. He was running second, and McFadden at that point was starting to get away. Now he's turned the tables. There he is, the driver at work. Small, as we said, driving the AX6 chassis, pulled out a huge gap in this opening lap already. McFadden hasn't been able to get the best start the second time around. He'll be really cursing that restart because he was he was leading the race earlier on and now he's, uh, he's, he won't be catching small at this rate and he's struggling to hold off Daniel Elliott in third. Well, the leader is cruising at the moment, but the battle further back is intense. I alluded to Ben Hall a while ago who started from way back in position eight. He's making good progress and now battling for the minor placings. We'll get a shot shortly. Look for the yellow cart. There he is, probably about fifth on the circuit at the moment. See cart number 22, that's Regan Payne, uh, who's made a sensational start driving the Merlin chassis. He's up into fourth place, looking for a pass on Elliot. Nothing between them as they come past the front pit sweeper. We've got a yellow flag out. The drivers will observe that. They can't pass all the yellow flags out. And it looks as though we've got another red flag situation, David. Well, I, I haven't seen this in many a year. Yeah, a little bit unprecedented. There's a driver being tapped straight on the head. <laughs> James Small, race leader, and another man has come to grief on the side of the racetrack. So there's been some casualties here. And it's Tony D'Alberto, the Victorian in the uh, Bridgestone shot entry. And uh, there's, in fact, now been, as we can see, a driver's meeting called for. You'd suggest because of some of the over-exuberant tactics out there. Yeah, Clark, of course, Ross Hill not happy with the drivers for stopping immediately when the red flag came out. Ben Hall on the inside makes another great start, moves up into fourth place, and for the third restart in a row, uh, James Small has gone through and taken the lead. Graphic images of Small being uh, smacked on the head a little while ago. He'll be looking forward to getting this race over and done with so he can get some panadols into him. Yeah, I'd suggest that was simply because he didn't stop uh, perhaps as early as, as, as he should have when the red flag came out. But he'll, he won't be thinking about that. Uh, he'll be just thinking about getting on with the race and trying to go through uh, and take the win. McFadden slots into second for the third race restart. Cart number 59. You just see him tuning the engine there. He's uh, adjusting the fuel flow that's going directly into the engine. And that's critical throughout these, race, in these races in these 100cc engines. And you'll see the majority of drivers doing it frequently. You're watching the final of Junior Intercontinental A, sponsored by Bob J and t -Marts. And up front, James Small is having a reasonably trouble-free run at the moment, although McFadden, one gets a feeling, is going to pounce when he gets the opportunity. They're starting to spread out just a little now. The battle not quite as absorbing, absorbing rather, further back in the pack as Small shows them the way home. It's still Daniel Elliott, the West Australian, running third. Driver of cart 36, the Tony cart entry. 
Well, Soak Elliott's run wide there. Ben Hall also gets up on the ripple strip. The pace has slowed up quite dramatically. It looks as though we're getting a few drops of rain on the circuit. You see the cart's getting very sideways. Half 55, that's Joshua Townsend. Clutch, he manages to keep going with the clutch assisted engine. But the tracks now become very slippery as the drivers tippy toe their way around this Ipswich circuit. Carter's moved up past Elliott into third place, and he's now got small in his sights. Oops. Oh! Andrew. To resemble a karting wrecking yard at the moment. Andrew Hobby and Peter Hamilton both involved there. Looks as though they're both okay, fortunately. Definitely a few spits of rain falling on the circuit. A feature of uh, the racing you'll see later on today's program. We've got some hopefully fabulous onboard vision. Some drivers mounted with onboard cameras. We look forward to that. Watching Jay Small sweep past our camera, going through that left-hander, and then the, the flick into the right. That's Carter in 25, the South Australian. And some of them are starting to get a little taily. Adhesion becoming a problem out there. Yep, there we go. There's another one off the track. That's Jeffrey Grant, the Queenslander, on his local track. McFadden has a look behind him. He's actually managed to get past Small and take the lead. Let's look further back in the field. It's James Harrigan leading Tim Moylan, cart number 77, who's gone off the track. Lost a couple of places there. Ben Hall closing in on the back of cart number 28. That's Kyle Johnson. Fabulous scrap leading into the back hairpin. Five carts. Oh, another problem. And uh, there may have been a tree get a work out there. And it's Ben Hall in 44. He'll be disappointed with that. Been a great drive by him so far. He's and beached he's it on, on the, the ripple curve. strip. Well, that's that's tragic for Hall. He was up into fifth place in only his second junior in Continental A race, doing really, really well, but he's out of it now. We're still under green light conditions, though. Elliot in 36, you're watching. Negotiating this fabulous Willowbank race circuit. The skilled engineering entry of our race leader, Neil McFadden, up front. He'd lead by about 10 metres. He's fairly safe at the moment. There's a battle for you between second and third james small and jamie carter small may have the best racing line through that right hander he has and we may expect the other man carter to come nipping back at him side by side up the main straight carter on the inside and he's gone through you see how they actually ran wide that's because of the rain on the track although it seems to have eased a bit still quite slippery out there though carter acknowledging something the green light's still on they're still on racing conditions I'd suggest, David, that actually Carter's signalling that let's stop fighting and let's try and catch, catch McFadden because he is pulling away on him. Either that or he might have some concerns about the, the slippery nature of the circuit. He might be calling for officials to do something. And uh, a lot of understeer now being created on these, these carts as well, which is something you don't see a whole lot of at this stage of the race. Once tyres are up to their optimum temperature, they're slipping and sliding. No, as Carter has the best of the battle. That's true, David. It looks as though the rain's actually getting a little bit heavier now. You see him taking an unusual racing line. That's to avoid the rubber, which gets very, very slippery when it does rain. Small hasn't given up, though. Has a look down the inside. Slots back in behind Carter. The pace has really been um, just depreciated significantly. You can really see that Carter is cruising in 25. Small still wants to have a go, though. He's a racer. And, yeah, he's and that shot through. graphically shows the moisture now on the circuit. So... Undoubtedly, we're probably heading for a red flag here. Yes, it's, um, this is the third time they've tried to have the race, uh, and it's not the best conditions to be racing, and you'll also notice the dark. And the rain falling, in. you can see in that shot. Yeah, really not good conditions. Having said that, Carter and Small are not giving up, actually giving each other a touch there. As they come through, leading up to chain break corner, the track's very, very slippery now. The pace has really dropped off. The skilled engineering entry of McFadden is still cruising out in front. And undoubtedly we're heading for a red flag. Officials have no option really. Because it is going to become dangerous. Water and uh, the marbles up high on the circuit. A lethal combination for problems. And look at them now. They're just ambling around the Willowbank Raceway circuit. Small's actually managed to pull away from Carter quite a bit there. So... Uh, Small's not giving up on it. Carter looks as though he's content for third place, although he's going to have to do a little better than that because Daniel Elliott, the very impressive 13-year-old Western Australia, is catching right up to it. Yellow flags out, suggests someone else has left the track. Visibility would be coming very poor, particularly for drivers with uh, the dark visors, in yes, the case of James Small, who we're looking at. Now, uh, there's the red flag. And as a result of that red flag, the race will be declared in the final of Junior Intercontinental A. McFadden will get the win. Jamie Carter will be awarded second place to South Australian. 
Small will be given third place, followed by Elliott in fourth. There's the point score for you at the completion of two rounds of this national championship. McFadden, 115 points, leading by 11 points over Carter, followed by Small, Harrigan, Moylan and Slade, rounding out the top six in that point score of the Bob Jane Junior Intercontinental A Championship at the completion of two rounds. The Cardos Magazine Intercontinental A class was as competitive as ever, with 22 drivers from every state in Australia competing. Victorian Clint Cathcart in his first ever Intercontinental A race starred throughout the heats in the Wins Arrow AX6. Cathcart also won the 20 lap pre final to line up on pole for the final. Reigning Australian and North American junior champion Michael Caruso finishing second, ahead of first round winner Jamie Wincup, Brendan Dive, and Clayton Pine. A big field to do battle in this 28 lap journey. Let's now take a look at the grid for you as we still watch the highlights of the pre-final earlier today. Clint Cathcart, as I've told you, the Victorian will start on pole position by virtue of his domination this weekend. Michael Caruso, the New South Welshman, will start beside him on the outside of the front row. And further back on the second row, it's Wind Cup and Brendan Dive. Pine and Ben George sharing the third row. Gee, that's going to be a battle royale up front, I can tell you. Then going back through the grid, position seven, Jason Burns. Huey Ling Dean on position number eight. Alan Gurr, Peter Richards, Adam Gill and Warwick Spooner, the Victorian, is rounding out the top 12 for this event. I'm joined in commentary on this occasion by Daryl Smith, one of Australia's best ever carters, the winner of the World Cup in 1991. That was at Suzuka in Japan. Good to see you, Daryl. And this should be quite a race. Thanks, David. Yeah, this will be great. I've got all you know, the best drivers in the country competing in this. And uh, we'll see how we go on the start here. Caruso cross very quickly from the outside. There is a drama further back in the pack. There's bits and pieces flying everywhere. And we now go on board with Wynn's race cam aboard Adam Gill's cart number 71. And wherever you may be watching today's program, this will give you a great idea of the sorts of G-forces and the physical nature of driving carts. It's not to be underestimated, Daryl. It's not easy. It's not at all. These things, uh, they generate about four or five Gs around some of these corners. And um, it's, it's a tough process out there. These guys have got to be quite fit. So, um, you know, being quite young as they are, they, uh, they need to keep up their nutrition, diet and fitness program quite regularly. Wins race cam again. Gill battling away back in the pack. The camera strapped to the side of the driver's helmet. Gives you a great perspective as they run up the straight. May have received a tap there. Look at them bobbing and weaving. And not a lot of racing room there. Gee, Gil getting into some trouble at the moment, Daryl. Yeah, he went out wide and uh, let a few guys through, so he's, uh, he's in a bit of bother going back through the pack. So up front here, still got Clint Cathcart with Caruso behind him. Wink up in third. The two up front, Cathcart and Caruso, have been outstanding all weekend. And they continue that momentum in this 28-lap final. No change, it's still Cathcart. Has time for a look over the shoulder. Well aware of the fact the challenger Caruso is right behind him. Yeah, Caruso pressuring you know, quite hard here. They've pulled a bit of a gap on Wing Cup and Brendan Dive in fourth place. I think he's just taken third. And uh, Clayton Pine coming up in fifth spot. But yeah, it's, it's quite a dice going on here. These two going into the corner quite hard. Wing Cup comes out. has the best of the battle. Dive in cart number 15. And we... Head back up front once more, where Cathcart really has his hands full. And back on board with the wins race cam and Adam Gill. Yeah, I think Adam's trying to pick up where he lost off uh, before. He, um, he's gone back through the pack a bit now, trying to make up lost ground and going through the chicane. He'll be back up the front again with Cathcart and Caruso. Caruso putting a lot of pressure on Cathcart, so we'll see how he goes. And, uh, Brendan Dive giving Wink up the same, the same deal, so he's doing it right back there as well. And... Got Clayton Pine back here in fifth once again. Some tyre screeching on the circuit. You can hear at the moment a reflection of uh, the fact that a lot of these drivers are pushing very hard as Dive goes up the inside. He made a good move there on Jamie Winkup and Pine's closed up the gap and uh, going quite hard up the front here. See if Brendan Dive can make an inroads on uh, Caruso and Cathcart up the front. This is the scrap for the lead. Then a gap of about 20 metres back to... The man in third place, Brendan Dive, who so nicely moved up on the inside of Wind Cup to relegate him back one spot. Oh, there's a runaway wheel, and that is a dangerous scenario in any form of motor racing. 
Yeah, Alan Gerr back there in the toll cut was fortunate he didn't get hit in the head there, so uh, you know, he's just gone through. Adam Gill once again, we've got the race team on him, and, and uh, he looks like he's in the middle of nowhere. He's no one in front. Oh, yeah, there's a couple up there. And he's lost touch with them, really. Yeah, he's, uh, he's out in his own. Starting from position 11, he wouldn't be happy at the moment, but nonetheless bringing us great pitches courtesy of wins, and we're very happy about that. Race leader is Clint Cathcart, the Victorian in the Arrow. Right behind him, you're watching Michael Caruso, the New South Welshman in the Tony Cart. One of the leading uh, chassis designs, the Tonys. And they've been uh, really at the cutting edge for many years in karting, haven't they? Yeah, they're one of the better, better makes of kart around the world, if not one of the best in the world. Um, Caruso, as you can see, he's just sitting back, just cruising along and uh, hoping Cathcart's going to make a mistake. But, um, you know, he's taking it pretty easy at the moment, just trying to preserve the ties for later on in the race. Uh, Brenda Dive still there in third position from uh, Jamie Wincup and uh, Clayton Pine still there in fifth position. I think coming up behind him is uh, Alan Gurr in the top cart. Darrell, so we often talk about slipstreaming and the benefit of slipstreaming in motor racing. In karting, does it have the same appeal as, uh, as is the case in other forms of motorsport? I don't want that to sound like a silly question, but they're yeah. a much smaller machine, much lower to the ground. Is there much advantage in sitting second? I think on a, on a straight such as this, you know, it is a big advantage and uh, tucking right in behind and crouching down as much as possible, it definitely helps. The, um, obviously, like you said before, they're quite small, not like a car where the slipstream is probably more so effective, but uh, no, it does help. Caruso, meantime, has taken the race lead, <coughs> pardon me, a buffer of about two metres between first and second. Cathcart will not be appreciative of that fact. Back on board again with Gill. And you can see him tucking over the top of the steering wheel when you feel you're almost going to fall over the front of the cart with this race cam. Now he sits back in the seat. As we watch Caruso, race leader, continue to negotiate this nice layout at Willow Bank in Queensland. Rain has disappeared for the time being. And now Cathcart over the top of the wheel, steering wheel that is, in effort to maximise his speed down the straight. Michael Caruso pulling a bit of a gap here. He's capitalised on the you know, Cathcart mistake and uh, just cruising around. He's the back of the, the rest of the pack coming through. Daniel Sewell running up the back of Dominic Albanese here, losing a bit of time. And in front of them, I think we've got uh, young Ben George in the Dino cart. Cart Oz Magazine, the sponsor of Intercontinental A Racing, which you're watching. In the Winds Australian Karting Championship, back down the main straight they run and back on board with the Winds Race Cam. And we've been enjoying the trip around Willow Bank with Adam Gill, who uh, at least now can see another cart in sight, so he's not going to have to contend with terminal boredom any longer, which has been one of the challenges he's had to face over the last couple of laps. Well back in the field, though. Now back up front is Clint Cathcart, driver of Cart 48, started on pole position has been outstanding. The yeah, Cathcart's trying to catch Caruso. He's uh, lost a bit of ground on him. Caruso's really put the, put the um, pressure on and, and pulled away quite a considerable gap. I mentioned in the preliminary that for Cathcart, this is his first ever intercontinental A race. How tough is that? I mean, what sort of a job is he doing? Yeah, he's done a fantastic job um, to come up at this level and, and produce the goods that he has done is, is really a good effort. Cameras panning back, further back in the pack, picking up more action. It's great to see carts on television. I reckon uh, for a bloke like you, Daryl Smith, it would be a welcome addition to the karting calendar, the fact that uh, the elite classes contesting the national championship are now getting national television coverage. I mean, it is, after all, the, the biggest participant form of motorsport in the country. Yeah, this is uh, it's a definite plus for the go-karting community. Um, the go-karts are... You know, the closest form of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that you can get in the world, actually. So anything on TV is a definite benefit for them. That's Brendan Dive in 15. New South Wales driver in the Birrell entry. Yeah, he's driving the Birrell cart once again, another top-of-the-range gay cart from Europe. Well, we've got a spin here. Do the carnage. Nice shot once again from the Winds Race Cam. It just shows you, if, you know, Adam, the camera on Adam Gill, how close the racing is. Back up front, you've got Caruso. He looks quite comfortable out there, just passing the back marker. I think it was Ben George. And Caruso just taking a nice and steady, choking the engine once again to get the, keep the engine nice and cool. 
it, uh, it's, you've got to keep it up all the time, keep the shaking of the engine going. It just, covering the airbox just creates a, uh, you know, a big charge of fuel going into the engine, which you know, cools the engine down totally, and they last a lot longer. Only a couple of laps now remaining in this Intercontinental A final. And we had a, a great battle up front for a long time, but there's no doubt Caruso is starting to jump away with this. You're watching the man in second place currently, Cathcart, who's done a marvellous job for his first race meeting in Intercontinental A. I think he'd feel well satisfied with second place, albeit perhaps a touch disappointing. He did start on pole, did win the pre-final, but it's been a big weekend for him. Yeah, it's a big effort from Cathcart, as we mentioned earlier, driving the new Arrow AX6 entry and uh, it's, it's a good um, a good position for a Australian mate chassis at this stage. One lap now remaining for our race leader Michael Caruso. The New South Welshman nicely turned out team, highly professional as is the case with the majority of competitors contesting the Wins Australian Karting Championship. I think the professionalism right through the ranks is reflected by the amount of corporate support they're obtaining and uh, also in manufacturer terms too. Caruso, about half a lap to run now before he wins the second round of the Intercontinental A in the Wins Championship. And this class, as I've told you, sponsored by Cartos Magazine, bringing you the best karting action from home and around the world, available in news agencies and good karting stores, first week of every month. Yeah, Michael's home and house here, just cruising to uh, a very good victory. Hands in the air, just showing his happiness there. So he's done a great job. Well done to Caruso, the winner. Second place will go to Clint Cathcart, the Victorian. Then Brendan Dive, Jamie Wincup, the Victorian, finishing fourth ahead of Alan Gurr and Peter Richards, storming home into sixth position, the Queenslander. Now the point score at the completion of two rounds in the national championship. Wincup maintains the lead on 107 points. Then Brendan Dive, Michael Caruso, Alan Gurr, Brendan May and Adam Gill, despite a, a disappointing performance in that particular race, still finds himself in the top six. The Eastern Creek International Kart Raceway Formula A category is a premier class of karting in Australia, with 22 of the nation's elite drivers contesting the class at Ipswich. 1997 Oceania champion Nick Aglin bounced back to form, after an ordinary first round in Adelaide to take the pre-final win, ending up on pole position for the finale, ahead of reigning national champion David Clark, Mark Domache and Joshua Pontello. Two carts in total to do battle here. Your pole sitter will be Nick Aglin, the New South Welshman, in the arrow entry. David Clark starts on the outside of the front row beside him, the Victorian. Then Mark Domache starting on the inside of the second row. Pontello on the outside of him. On the third row, Troy Hunt and William Yarwood. Then Ryan Ladinsky, the winner of the opening round of this series in Adelaide. Steve Marr on the outside of him. Winterbottom, Wesley May and going then down to Richardson and Dunn. They are the top 12 for you as we get set for a start. And I'm rejoined in commentary by former World Cup winner, Daryl Smith, as they charge towards the first couple of corners. Yeah, thanks, David. Uh, Nick Aglin jumped in the lead straight away. Well, someone's gone off, Mark Winterbottom at the back here. But uh, this will be exciting. These are the best guys in Australia, the best you'll see. And um, we'll see how they progress through the first couple of corners here. Weather's done the right thing. Rain has gone away. And uh, the field in predominantly Indian file negotiate the first lap of this Willow Bank circuit. And uh, so far, so good. Minor mishaps only. Agland is your race leader, the New South Welshman. Another one driving the Arrow AX6 cart, tucking down, maximising his pace. Yeah, Nick's doing a great job here. He's trying to pull a gap as quickly as possible. As you mentioned, he's using an Arrow AX6 Australian made chassis. See how dominant, or see how it goes against these dominant uh, European chassis. Do you see the Australian chassis in uh, in the future being able to compete on, on equal terms with the European marks? Yeah, they're putting a big effort in at the moment. I think um, you'll see a definite turnaround in the not-too-distant future, actually, of um, you know, how they will perform and, and the effort that's gone into them will, will certainly justify that. Clark 
wearing number one for all the right reasons defending national champion runs second good battle for the minor placings seeing William Yarwood there the Queenslander in two running back about fourth or fifth at this stage and now launches a challenge up on the inside and trying to uh, to move up a spot on Domache in 18 and has been successful in doing so so a change in the order with Yarwood moving up one more spot this is home turf for William Yarwood he's uh, home track advantage and um, he's made most of it got on the back of David Clark here and the way he's going here it won't be too long before he's in front of him man in front is enjoying the drive being left alone which will play right into his hands he can really dictate the pace no secret of course uh, whilst the others are jostling for position they can tend to slow one another down driving defensively and the leader is going to be very very hard to catch from here Agland you're looking at the battle for second on the right hand side of your screen is Clark and now up the inside moves Yarwood nice move drifts out a little wide on the exit of that corner if Clark could have stayed close enough, he may have been able to nip back up beside him. Yeah, it was only a matter of time, but before William Yar was to get through, we'll see uh, what inroads he can make on uh, Nick Agland out in front here. Clark's trying to hold on the back of William Yarwood, but um, the chassis just seems to be a little bit tentative through some of the turns, whereas William seems to be uh, certainly nice and smooth. We've said that Formula A is the premier class in national karting. Run through the specifications of these karts and the costs involved in going racing for the uninitiated watching. It's quite an expensive class. Uh, a lot of development goes into them. They're a 100cc rotary valve motor, producing about 28 horsepower. And, um, you know, they're quite expensive. Oh, machines. oh, sorry to interrupt. We see Clark and Yarwood coming into contact, and Clark gets back up into second spot. Yeah, David Clark, he uh, unfortunately, I don't think it was on purpose, but he hit the back of William, forcing him wide, and, and the way he went through. Just going back to that again now. But, um, I don't think it was on purpose, but you know it was definitely an advantage that you make the most of. Purely a racing incident for mine. An example of uh, the last of the late breakers. So what sort of money does one have to find to establish himself in this category at the competitive level? You're looking at around about twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars at least for the five-round series or four-round series, as this is. Um, the tyres, the engines, it's very, very expensive and. You need to have that sort of a budget if you want to be competitive at all. And that doesn't include the cost of buying the car in the first place and, and setting up the team structure. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, the, the chassis themselves aren't very expensive really at all. They, um, you know, the expense comes in the running cost of testing and uh, producing your, your practice laps. Pretty big money, really. There's Agland, who obviously, uh, by virtue of the support of his sponsors, etc., has got the budget, because if he hasn't got the budget, he's not leading this final as comfortably as he is. Getting around very quickly, certainly not uh, slackening the pace off any, and driving a nice smooth line too. The handling ability of these carts, particularly uh, when the tyres reach their, their at maximum temperature, is quite extraordinary. Now, David Clark, the reigning national champion, who was running second or third in this race, has fallen by the wayside, he's off the track, Noticeable by his absence. Yeah, didn't see what happened there, but um, he's obviously fallen off the track somewhere along the line, whether it's a mechanical failure or, or he had a spin or something like that. But no, he's nowhere to be seen at this stage. Ryan Wodinski taking up third spot. Uh, Troy Hunt is making good moves there to slot into um, fourth position. Wodinski, an emphatic winner of round one of this wins Australian Karting Championship staged in Adelaide a couple of months ago. And the battle is certainly on in earnest behind uh, Lodinsky. Yeah, Troy Hunt is on the move at the moment. He's pulled away from Domache and he's chasing Lodinsky. Once again, checking the engines going into the corner, keep the, uh, the motors cool by giving it a charge of fuel. You see the hand go over the air box, cover it totally, and then a uh, big puff of smoke come out the back of it. Lodinsky in seven we saw momentarily and a great battle further back in the pack with a quartet of protagonists going hard at it. Malcolm Heath sliding underneath Rico. Oh, a bit of, uh, bit of a touch there. Tyson Pierce looks like he's going to come through. Mark Littlebottom capitalised on it. Daniel Rickard lost out big time there. He's gone from uh, 
bring about fifth or sixth position way back. He did well to keep it going, though, under the circumstances. As that camera panned through the corner, we could see a cart stranded on the left-hand side of the racetrack that has taken its toll this event. A couple of drivers are going on unexpected off-track excursions. Meantime, um, Agland is our race lead up, up front, out of, out of camera shot. And some movers and shakers further back in the field here. Yeah, in this uh, front of this pack, we've got Wesley May. Um, he is ahead of uh, Reef Corbett. Yes, that's Reef, and it uh, looks like Lou Van Dorn behind him. So uh, Wesley May trying his best to break the, break the stranglehold they've got over him there here. Wesley May in 39 started from position number 10. He is uh, another New South Welshman. That's what, another good thing about karting. Uh, all the states are heavily represented, which I guess reflects the, the strong base this sport has in all states. Yeah, this is, um, you know, obviously Australian Championship, and so all the states are represented, and very well by, by everyone. So, you know, here we have here William Yarwood chasing Dick Aglin, see if he can make any inroads on him over the next couple of laps. Nick's out in front, cruising around at the moment, taking it quite, uh, obviously he's, he's trying hard, but he's just in cruise mode at the moment. This driver's done a very good job, the Queenslander, on his home base, William Yarwood, in the CRG entry. He started from um, position number six and now runs in the top three comfortably, albeit with a fair bit of work to do if he hopes to get on equal terms with that man, Agland, the race leader, 55, really bolting away with this one in the Arrow AX6 cart. Great to see such a, a healthy crowd on hand for the second round of the Winds Australian Karting Championship here at Willow Bank in Queensland, now back with Luzinski who uh, seems to have sorted out the Gremlins. Uh, this is probably uh, the strongest he's been all weekend. Yeah, Ryan's had a, a run of bad luck all weekend. He's, it was expected to be the, the dominant force here, being his home track as well as William Yarwood, but um, he's had awful luck all weekend. Nick Aglin once again coming through. He's drove well all weekend as well. Uh, totally dominated the pre-final, winning by a large margin and um, yeah, really, William Yarwood has really got to put in a big effort if he's even looking like catching uh, Nick Aglin at this stage. He certainly won't be giving up. Or somebody uh, at the top of the screen then I saw just go off the racetrack. We'll pick that up for you. William Yarwood, meantime, continues to maintain second spot. There's our race leader in 55, Nick Aglin, who's led from the moment they said go in this race and uh, is really dictating the pace to suit himself at the moment, which is fair enough when you're a fair way in front. I'm just uh, a little bit concerned about Lazinski. I think he may have gone. He was running third on the circuit. We'll try and pick it up for you as we pan back to second place, being Yarwood. And sweep left with our race leader, Nick Agland. And uh, Lozinski has certainly gone, Daryl, so that would mean then that Troy Hunt will move up into third spot, I think you'll find. Yeah, I think uh, when you mentioned earlier someone on the back of the track, I'm pretty sure that was Ryan who come to grief once again. He's had wretched luck over the weekend. Here we have Nick Aglin just cruising around. He's only just got to hold it together. I'm not too sure you know, how many laps are, are left here, but he's only got a, he's in cruise mode at the moment. Just needs to hold it together to take the win. Not long left at all now. Agland obviously has uh, buttoned off as we approach just one lap remaining, in fact, for the Formula E finale in round two of the Wins Championship. Should also mention the third round will be staged in Victoria at the Melbourne International Card Raceway. That's on August 23. Then coming to New South Wales at Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway for the final round in Sydney on October 11. A great innovation this series. And I'm sure that Nick Agland agrees with that because he's going to pick up maximum points, maximum prize money as the winner of the second round. He's only got about half a lap to run. You'll find Yarwood will finish in second and Troy Hunt, by virtue of the unfortunate demise of Lazinski, will pick up further. 55, Agland, just going through the motions now at Willowbank. And back onto the main straight. There is the chequered flag. He is the winner of the second round of the Formula A. Nick Agland, the New South Welshman, driving the Arrow AX6. In second, William Yarwood from Queensland. Troy Hunt, another New South Welshman in third. Then Mark Domashe, 
Finishing up with fourth place, Joshua Pontello was fifth. And Tyson Pierce, the South Australian, rounding out the top six in that Formula E finale. And now the point score sees David Clark, the leader on 91 points at the completion of two rounds. Three points further back is Lozinski, then Nick Aglin, Troy Hunt, Joshua Pontello, a model of consistency, and William Yarwood is six in the point score at the completion of two rounds. Hope you've enjoyed it. Here we are, we're going for a lap around the track of Todd Road Circuit in Melbourne in an Eastern Creek Formula A cart. Going to get ready for the start here, we're going to prepare himself. Come down the lights of green, this is a flat out straight, you're looking at 118, 120 kilometres an hour. Hard braking, off the throttle, now you accelerate out of the turn. Try and it's flat out into a pretty fast left hander, banking up a bit. Accelerate out of the turn. Go through a fast right hand sweeper into another hard braking zone. Now you accelerate out of here and you go down through a fast left hander which is nearly flat out when the tyres are warm. And you come into a double apex right hander which is quite difficult. Now I'm going to go through a left hander here. Come up across the crest of the hill which determines the way you get down the straight. You have to flat out. It gets down the straight. And that's a lap around the Melbourne International Car Raceway in the Eastern Creek Formula A car. Welcome to the Melbourne International Karting Raceway. Great to have your company wherever you might be watching. This is round three of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. On this occasion, it's the Bob Jane T-Mart Junior Intercontinental A. A great looking field. There is the starting grid for you in this event. And Demerick on pole position. He's uh, certainly going to be hard pressed though because there's a number of drivers that have been particularly competitive during the lead up to this race. And Ian Salvestrin, the editor of Kart Oz magazine, joins me in commentary. A terrific layout here at the Melbourne Raceway, 960 metres and a good field. Yeah, the strongest field in the series history, David, as we get ready for a start. We do, and away they go. We'll watch the charge to the first corner. Demerick, in fact, that started on pole in Kart 30, was actually swamped at the start there. About four drivers have gone straight past him as they settle down, having all got through the first corner safely. Yes, they'll just shuffle through the chicane. It looks as though Neil McFadden's jumped to an immediate lead from Daniel Elliott, the West Australian. And oh. it's Jamie Carter who moves up into third place, and Max Demerick follows him through. So McFadden continuing the kind of form we've seen from this young man throughout the duration of this national championship so far. Gee, they're getting very sideways there. Plenty of attitude and uh, drifting out. A racetrack that seems to comprise a little bit of everything, some tight corners, some flowing ones. Yeah, the juniors are all very keen to get going. The tyres will still be a little bit cold on these opening laps. It's a long 23-lap final, so uh, as the, the carts and the tyres get some more heat into them, they'll, the drivers should settle down and get into a nice rhythm. The young New South Welshman, Neil McFadden, in the top cart, number 59, race leader. Next man through, driving 36, is Daniel Elliott in the Tony cart entry, a West Australian driver, in fact. That's him now on screen. Some nice camera work reflecting the closeness of karting. Running third on the racetrack is the driver of kart 25, Jamie Carter. He's a South Australian in the gold kart. So we've got three different states up front in three different types of karts. Daniel Elliott actually being passed on the inside by Jamie Carter. Great move as they go over the hill. Uh, Daniel Elliott actually having his second race in the Junior Intercontinental A class. And Max Demerick in kart number 30 behind him is making his debut in the class. And from 26 drivers, he's about fourth on the racetrack. So that's an exceptional drive from Demerick. Great scrap here. You're watching some uh, very tight action, uncompromising stuff from these drivers. That's the Westgate Bridge you see in the background. A driver, in fact, two of them running into trouble. One of them Shannon. is Shannon Sidebottom. How appropriate. Looks as though Stephen Bosnovsky involved in that one also. We follow the field up the, up the hill. Jamie Carter now actually pulling away a little bit from Elliott who's under siege from Demerick, and looks like that's Tim Slade in uh, cart num number two behind them. McFadden, the leader, tucking down behind the steering wheel. More mayhem at the Melbourne Kart International Raceway. Grant, was it? It was Kill Johnson, in fact. Kill Johnson involved with Jeffrey Grant there, so unfortunately they're both out of the race. Having another look at it for you. Simply a case of running in too hard to that tight right hand up. A build up of traffic riding wheels as you can do in any open wheel formula i was about to say though when referring to our leader mcfadden who's out of uh, cameras range at the moment 
He has a lead of about 30 metres already, which is extraordinary. Well, McFadden was actually under quite a bit of pressure throughout the heats, and uh, it looked as though he may not be able to make it three from three. He didn't win any of the qualifying heats. Uh, but come the final, the business end of the meeting, and he's just disappeared. He's left the rest of the field in his wake, and, and they're going to have to do something special to catch him. Carter has shaken off the challenge of Elliott momentarily, but Elliott's still close enough to pounce. That's being reflected here right now. Elliott in 36, and this is a real high-speed freight train of carts. About five of them running nose to tail, and a great indication of how close this formula is. Tamaric moving up the inside. This is a sensational race. Carter, that move has enabled him to get uh, clear a little bit into second. Tamaric, though, he's the man on the move. Started on pole position, didn't have the best of starts, dropped back through the field, but now he's clawing his way back through again uh, into third place. As you can undoubtedly see, weather conditions here perfect for this third round of the Wins Australian Carty Championship. And if you may have just joined us, this is the Bob Jane Junior Intercontinental A Final. Great racing too. Another move. Oh, and riding wheels into the tyre barrier. Spectacular stuff. Uh, one of them was able to emerge unscathed, went back across the racetrack in 25. And that is a tragedy for Jamie Carter, who was running so well. Well, Tony D'Alberto somehow has managed to escape from that incident. It was a sensational dice, but he's dropped way back through the field in uh, about 7th or 8th spot, just ahead of Kane Ryder there. That's enabled Max Demerick to come clear in third place, uh, driving the techno car, and he's... Uh, as we look at, have a look at the replay here. Up the inside, riding wheels, and um, you can imagine that both drivers' eyeballs were fairly big there at that moment. Yeah, the size of tennis balls as they went careering across the track. That could have been quite dangerous, obviously, yes. as they uh, floated across what was the exit of the right-hander. Yes, as Kane Ryder has a look down the inside of James Harrigan, makes the move. Uh, yeah, it's only one lane through that corner, which is the one they're approaching now, and uh, they weren't going to go through there side by side. So uh, very bad luck for Jamie Carter. So we look now at James Small leading Tim Slade. Indeed, and uh, Neil McFadden, race leader, Driver of car 59 is a long way in front. And barring mechanical failure, he'll get home in this one again. Being a model of consistency in the wins championship for 1998. Yes, driving exceptionally well. McFadden, we're looking at James Small on screen. He's driving the ROAX6 car. He's had to come from back on the grid and he's now up into uh, position three, uh, appropriately driving cart number three. And Tim Slade, the young Adelaide driver, doing exceptionally well. Uh, in fourth place right behind him. Slade in the CRG entry. I imagine despite the fact there's so many different manufacturers, cart chassis manufacturers represented, they appear to be very evenly matched in performance states because of the nature of the racing. Here's a good battle as a drag race down the straight. 32 moving up on the inside. That's Ricky Occapinti, the Victorian. This goes through on the inside of Kane Ryder. Yeah, that's right, David. I mean, really, a 23-lap final, um, it comes down to the driver. The engines are, are very, very similar. The carts are very similar. Drivers are either on Bridgestone or Dunlop tyres. In the end, it's, it's the best driver wins, and it's how it should be, I guess. It's how it should be, all right. One of the reasons this class of racing is so popular, thousands of competitors in carts. Nice shot. It really gives you a good idea of how hard the drivers are working. You've got to be fit, particularly in the upper body. These carts are very twitchy. They react quickly. That's McFadden, the race leader. The skilled engineering entry. Yeah. He's just been outstanding this year. That's right. He's, he's one of the opening two rounds. And uh, as he said, uh, barring mechanical failure, um, he'll make a three from three. Exceptional drive from McFadden thus far. He's busy at the wheel. The secret to uh, karting is to be smooth. I guess that's uh, not a startling revelation. That applies to any motorsport. But because of the twitchy nature of these machines, even more so. Yeah, that's right. As Alberto makes the move on the inside of Slade, clawing his way back up through the field after that earlier incident with Jamie Carter. Max Demerick, he's been the star this weekend. On his debut, he uh, qualified pole for this race and sitting in a comfortable second spot in the final. It's been an exceptional drive. Uh, certainly one to watch in the future. He's done well, in fact, because uh, he was under siege not long ago from the man in third, Slade. And he's done well to, uh, to jump away and find himself with a, a gap of about five metres. Excellent camera work, really demonstrating the pace. Uh, James Small, in fact, that is running third. Small's close right up on the back of him now. Uh, 
it's been a really good drive from Small. He'll be looking to make the move on Demerick uh, as he tries the outside, can't quite do it there as they climb the hill. Flat out left-hander, only inches apart as they touch 110 odd k's an hour down this main straight. Small up the inside, has a look. Got the racing line. Uh, yeah, was able to do, do the job and get through. And he's gone through. So it's, oh, you've got to be joking. After all that work, he's lost it. And, oh, well, the pitcher says it all. He's but disgusted. Just a couple of laps to go. It looks as though his engine has actually ceased there. As we look at the replay, you'll see the engine actually lock up. Clutch pulls in and Small's out of the race. With just a couple of laps to go, his engine's failed. Well, your heart bleeds for him. Been an outstanding driver in this race. Demerick on the charge. Last lap now for our race lead-up. And I refer to Neil McFadden, young New South Wales driver who's going to win this by half a lap or more. A fair bit of runoff on this racetrack too, which is a bonus. Yes, quite well presented. See the nice infields there. Uh, and located right in the middle of Melbourne too. Uh, people driving across the Westgate Bridge probably see this circuit quite often. But uh, McFadden, how good is this kid? I mean, he's going to make it three from three with just a couple of corners to go. He does it with so much confidence too. Unflappable off the track and on and the skilled engineering machine the top car driven by neil mcfadden wins the bob jane t mars jr intercontinental a final next man across the line was max demerit who's enjoyed himself out here this weekend tony d'alberto is your third place getter in that event he's driving a techno card as was the man in the runner-up spot demerit congratulations though to neil mcfadden Let's check the series point score at the completion of three rounds. McFadden, 173. Big margin to Jamie Carter, then Small. Harrigan, 101. Tim Slade, 96. And Tony D'Alberto rounding out the top six. Welcome to the Melbourne International Karting Raceway for round three of the 1998 Wins Australian Karting Championship. First up, the Kart Oz Magazine, starting grid for the Intercontinental A Final. And there it is for you. Win Cup on pole position has been brilliant during the lead-up to this race. He'll share the front row with Gurr. Next along comes Brown and Pine, Caruso and Holden, Dive and Bolton, Lovegrove and Ian Salvestrin. We'll start out at position number 10, then Burns and Gill. I'm joined in commentary by reigning Inter Intercontinental A champion, Troy Hunt. Good to see you. Great field here at a very, very good racetrack. Yeah, thanks, David. This is a great field we've got here. Um, I mean, many young, talented drivers around... 16 years of age and we've got to start here i think we have as they go racing tight left hander coming up a couple of them out of shape running nose to tail miraculous job really they all get through there safely in a big field too look at the pace it is a cracker yeah, there's a bit of aggression going on out there a lot of the drivers sort of want to try and get as many spots as they can on the first couple of laps and make a good run um, and they're showing a bit of aggression here to get those spots Race leader is Win Cup, which is hardly surprising. He's been the standout driver all weekend. Brendan May in the Merlin, unfortunately pushing his cart off the racetrack. And uh, for that to happen in the first lap of this event is a tragedy for him. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. He's from Sydney, young Brendan. It's a long way to travel and to come and uh, not even start the race. Bradley Brown is second, but maybe not for much longer. Very much under siege. One moving forward quickly is Alan Gurr who started from a fair way back on the grid, so great drive by him in the early stages of this event. Yeah, Alan's putting in some good moves here. He's uh, moving up. He's coming up on Bradley Brown now. Bradley Brown's having his first run in Interray for a long time with the uh, Team Energy this weekend. Gurr up the inside. Driver of uh, 19, the top card, another New South Welshman. There's a top three for you. Win Cup, Gurr and Pine, Clayton Pine. It's interesting actually David here we have uh, Dunlop leading with Bridgestone second and Dunlop third again it's uh, Alan Gurr is actually doing a pretty good job to be up there that far at the moment on the Bridgestone tyre they seem to be suffering a little bit this weekend throughout the heats uh, compared to the Dunlop tyre. There's something of a tyre war going on in this sport at the moment. Yeah that's right uh, last round at Ipswich we had Bridgestone winning every class and this weekend Dunlop have come out with a pretty good tyre being a little bit colder this weekend in um, in Melbourne, it seems that the Dunlop seems to be working a little bit better. Alan Gurr driving very hard to fend off the challenge of Clayton Pine, this youngster from Newcastle, the Newcastle region. Clayton Pine, the son of uh, Ron Pine, former Australian Super the Sedan Speedway champion. 
Yeah, uh, Clayton's putting in a pretty good job here. He's got a father with a bit of a, uh, experience in racing, and um, he's actually putting a bit of pressure on Gurr. As you see Caruso, the other Tony Kart driver, going underneath Dive there. Watching now Dive and Caruso. Side-by-side -side battle as I approach the left-hander, then the quick flip through the uh, right-hander. And we saw uh, Dive having a look over his shoulder there. He was almost uh, appealing to the other driver, leave me alone, but Caruso won't take any notice as he charges back at him again. Yeah, I'm sure Dive would love to get rid of uh, Caruso off the back of him there and get on with the job and try and catch uh, Gurr and Piner a little bit further up ahead, but uh, I don't think Caruso is going to give up that easy. He's in it for the battle and he wants to win just as much as Dive. Race leader is still Jamie Wincup. Now we see Gurr in 19, blasting past our camera. He runs second on the racetrack. Now we go back to Brendan Dive and Caruso again. That battle is very intense. Yeah, Caruso is also another driver on Bridgestone, but uh, I also just noticed here we have Clint Cathcart in the number 48 car. He actually had the start from the back of the field, and he's up. He's a fair way up. I'm not exactly sure where he is, but in the Arrow Egg 6, um, he's doing quite a good job there, and he's got a fair way up as he just passed Mitchell Bolton. The pace is an absolute scorcher in this Carthos Magazine Intercontinental A final. Their average speeds uh, around this track bearing in minus 960 metres. Uh, they're probably doing around 114, seeing as the juniors were doing about 110, so the reed valve engine, they're probably doing about 114 kilometres an hour. It's yeah. quite fast when you've got to pull up for a pretty tight corner at the end of that straight. Particularly when your backside is an inch off the ground. Yeah, that's right. It feels like a million, million kilometres an hour. There's Caruso, who's managed to pass uh, dive, Brendan Dive. That's been a wonderful battle. Dive is going to try very hard to come back at him. There's a, a stranded card on the side of the racetrack. That's the the zip card of Michael Lovegrove, who will be taking no further part in this one. And look at Caruso and Dive. They're still going at it. There's a good battle going on there. It'll be interesting to see what happens at the end of this. Who comes out the uh, Who comes out in front? And there's a long way to go, and there's also two people in front that they both want to catch. So they've got to try and catch them also. So no change in the order up front. This is really the the fascination in this particular event. Ooh, we saw Caruso marginally out of shape. Nothing serious though. That's the, the second and third runners you're now looking at. Alan Gurr in 19 and Clayton Pine in third. That is still a terrific scrap too. Meantime, our leader continues to stroll away with this one, Win Cup. But you get the feeling that it's not all over, certainly for the minor placings. Yeah, that's right. You've also got a few people running in round fifth and sixth that are fair way up in the series. Uh, Dive and Caruso, they're both, I believe, up in the top five in the series there. And you see Tim Macro, he's got a nose cone right in front of his face. You'd be finding that hard, pretty hard to see. He's going around there, I believe, behind Ian Salvestrin. There must have been a bit of contact there. I think you're right. Contact part and parcel of uh, this form of motor racing. They continue to drag race down the, the front straight here at the Melbourne International Karting Raceway. Host venue for round three of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. It's been a big success in its infancy, in its debut season of 1998. Looks like Matt Wall's got a problem. He's another front runner in the series. He, he's a, this is his first season in the FMK round. Looks like he may have had a flat tyre there. He'll be coming to pit shortly, I'm sure. In the CRG cart, yet another manufacturer involved in this sport. There is Caruso. Yeah, the uh, CRG team from Melbourne this year, they're putting in a pretty big effort with David Clark in Formula A. Um, it's pretty good this year, actually. There's a lot of teams putting in big efforts, and the series is starting to get a, a very big range of uh, manufacturers in the series. It's good. So Clayton Pine is uh, consolidated second on the racetrack. Gurr is third. Pine in the Auto 1 entry. Gurr seems to be falling back a bit here. I'd say he'd be starting to struggle a bit. Caruso, he's coming to the clutches of Caruso and Dive now. So I'm interested to see what happens now with uh, with uh, Caruso and Gurr, the two Bridgestone drivers up the front. I'm interested to see what happens here. It'll be interesting to see how the uh, the Bridgestones hold on because Caruso has driven this race very hard. It'll be a, a real compliment to the tyres if he can get home running uh, at the pace he's been maintaining thus far. Yeah, definitely. Caruso, after winning the round at Ipswich, he's... Uh, starting to come back up and show a bit of his form again. He struggled earlier in the weekend, but it uh, looks like they're starting to get a bit together. He just acknowledges the go. He says, let's go, let's get away from this guy, Dive. He's been hassling me all race. Great shot, three of them nose to tail through the right hand up. The Gurr is still hanging in there, but he's definitely probably 20% slower than he was. And that's frustrating, because it's obviously no fault of his. 
yeah, sure, I'm sure Gurr's starting to get a fairly frustrated now. He had a good start to the race, he was quite fast, but uh, obviously just haven't quite got it right for this race and he's starting to, to go off a bit, he's starting to struggle and having to drive that extra bit harder. So the New South Wales Tony Kart driver, Michael Caruso, has cleared out at the pointy end of that battle now. He's finally got a bit of breathing space and get a bit of time to relax and settle down and get into a good rhythm. And he's had pressure all race and this is the first time he's got a bit of clean air. Alan Gurr coming back at him though. He's a real racer, the man driving 19, the Konica machine. And Brendan Diver's still hanging in there making a great three-way battle out of this race. In fact, Diver's managed to move Alan Gurr up track, so he moves up one more spot. I think Gurr's almost relieved yeah. to be left alone for a while. Dive made a really good move there. He went underneath Gurr and just held him out so that uh, Gurr couldn't get on the rubber and get a good drive off the line. He's actually pulled two or three cart lengths on that move. He's, it's quite a good and intelligent move. You see Caruso, you see his cart lifting. He's starting to struggle a bit. and You can see how much strain goes on the driver's body throughout the corner. You're looking at three, four Gs there. Yeah, and also uh, the fact that the inside wheels are lifting an inch or two off the ground. That's right, these go-karts, they certainly flex, and the chassis is uh, very big importance. They certainly are a great buzz to drive, not that I'm good at it, but I've had the chance a few times and there's nothing quite like it. You see another casualty there of Barclay Holden from Queensland. This race, it's the uh, one exciting thing about FMK racing, it's such long distance that to finish a race and also be up the front, it's a very big achievement. So Caruso again finds himself under the hammer. And the hammer is Brendan Dive. It's a familiar picture, really, in this race. By the way, if you may have just joined us, the race leader is Jamie Wincup, and he's about half a lap ahead of this trio. Yeah, Wincup's certainly done a great job this weekend. He's been pretty consistently up the front all series, and obviously this weekend, once again, they've got the complete package together, and he's just bolted. He's left them for dead. So the battle continues. Not that many laps remaining now in this Cardoz Magazine Intercontinental A final. There's the top three for you. Win Cup, Young Clayton Pine and Michael Caruso. And right behind Caruso is the man in 15, Brendan Dive. That has been one heck of a scrap from the outset of proceedings in this. The Caruso would be really feeling the pain in his body now. It's been a long race. And while Wink up out there, he's just cruising, looking after his equipment. You've seen him just then, he was tuning the engine, make sure it stays together and doesn't seize before the end of the race. He's just cruising while well, I've got a good battle here going on between Dive and Caruso. You might just uh, elaborate on that engine tuning you referred to. Yeah, um, what they do, they have a carburetor with uh, a mixture of screws on the, on the carburetor. They can allow more or less fuel to go into the carburetor, um, and then, which then goes through into the engine. So... It, Later on in the race, they can open up the uh, and allow more open up the jet and allow more fuel to go into the engine, which efficiently cools the engine down and um, and keeps the level of performance on high. You can see him there now. He just chokes it and keep, puts a bit more fuel into the engine. You see the puff of smoke just to keep it cool. Jamie's just relaxing out there now and uh, making sure he brings it all home in one piece. And that's all he's got to do to win this race. Caruso still under siege from from dive. You're listening to expert comments from Troy Hunt, the reigning Australian Intercontinental A champion, who's uh, sitting up here in the commentary box, itching, wishing he was out there. Yeah, I can't wait. My, I'm, my race is after this one. It should be good. Uh, as I say, I'm uh, with the Bridgestone guys, and it should be a good battle. We'll also, in Formula A, with the uh, battle between Bridgestone and Dunlop continuing there. The senior ranks this year have been a very big battle between Bridgestone and Dunlop, and here we've got a good battle here going on between the Bridgestone and the Dunlop here. We have Caruso on the Bridgestone. You can see how much the tyres and the drivers have to work. You can see the tyres and the go-kart flexing there. The inside front wheel coming off the ground. Great vision. That's good. Wind Cup. As I said before, Wind Cup just putting a bit more fuel into the engine, keeping it cool, making sure he gets it all home in one piece. And he'll win this race without a doubt as long as he gets it home in one piece. He's done a sensational job to be, get a big lead like this and class it's so competitive to get a lead this big, it's quite an achievement. It certainly is and it's not as though he hasn't been doing it all season, he's been outstanding. <laughs> no, the techno team of uh, Remo Racing from Melbourne have done a great job. Divers got through to uh, relegate Caruso back one more spot. This has been an interesting dice with only a couple of laps remaining there. Be a good dice here, you see Dive pulled over the block. 
On the last lap, can Caruso come back at him? Dive makes a mistake. Caruso races up the inside. He'll be grinning like a carpet snake in a foul house under that helmet. That's the sort of thing racing drivers love. That's right. Dives uh, taking the defensive line, actually outbreaking himself. Now we see Caruso taking the defensive line. He's got this, he uh, got past Dive. He doesn't want to let it go now. Now Dive comes back out of the game. This has been terrific. There's your leader, Win Cup, inside uh, the last half lap or so. And Jamie Wincup, the Victorian in the techno entry. Oh, Dive and Caruso continue to have body contact. But I was about to say, Wincup is going to win the Cardos Magazine Intercontinental A final. Well, that's close. Clayton Pine finishing as the runner-up. We didn't see that much of Clayton in the final stages of the race. And third was Michael Caruso in the Tony entry. And it's now time to check the point score at the completion of three rounds in this national championship for you. No surprise, Win Cup, a clear leader on 167. Caruso second, then Dive just four points behind him, then a few points back to Alan Gurr. Clayton Pine doing a good job on 88. So the action continues at round three of the 1998 Wins Australian Karting Championship here at Melbourne's International Karting Raceway. The Eastern Creek Karting Raceway Formula A drivers are completing their roll-up laps here in preparation for the 32-lap final in Formula A. And there's the grid for you. Clark is starting up front by virtue of his great form. Lodinski in second, then Tyson Pierce, Mark Winterbottom. And so it goes down the grid for you. I'm rejoined by Ian Salvestrin. Thanks, David. This is the premier class of racing in Australia, the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A category. This is the elite of Australian karting as we look for a green light and the start. And this should be a fabulous finale. Away we go. Three of them charging towards the first corner. Running three wide on the racetrack. Man that started on pole, David Clark, has been swamped by Ryan Lodinski in the PCR entry. Great job by him starting out of position five to find himself up front already. Yeah, the field's uh, shuffling through the first couple of corners. Again, wanting to get some heat into the tyres. It's a long way. It's 32 lap final, nearly half an hour race. It's very, very hard on the drivers. And uh, they want good track position early as they settle in for this race. A number of drivers bumping into one another, which you'd expect they run nose to tail. Very important early in the event to try and uh, gain the upper hand, consolidate a good position on the racetrack. Here's a change of lead coming up as David Clark, who started on pole, moves down on the inside of Blazinski and now secures the position that he believes he earned this weekend through his consistency. That's right, Clark's been dominant. He qualified on pole position. He won the three qualifying heats. He won the pre-final to line up on pole for the final. And uh, if that's any sign, he's going to make this final all his because he's already in the lead at this 32-lap final. Winterbottom is third, Troy Hunt fourth. Uh, Troy in the commentary box just a short moment ago for our previous race call. So he'd be happy with things at the moment. Cruising in fourth position. Beautiful close-up shot of David Clark. The Victorian in the CRG entry. Ryan Lazinski has been fairly impressive in this national championship so far in 98. As we watch a change for third position with Hunt up the inside of Winterbottom. Winterbottom fights back. They both accelerate almost side by side. But you'll find Hunt has got the upper hand. You just see Hunt pointing ahead there. He's saying, let's not fight with each other. Let's, uh, let's try and catch the leaders. Because if we dice with each other, Mark, we're not going to catch them. And they're going to pull away even more. Hunt now has pulled two or three cart lengths already on Winterbottom. So we suggest Troy Hunt's the man on the charge. Gary Dan also making good progress in the techno cart number 10 he is a south australian driver the battle between hunt and winterbottom continues as it does up front between clark and lozinski racing back down the main straight real adrenaline rush for the drivers hitting top speed as they charge down the hill now drifting back further in the field that's joshua pontello in 27. yep leading chris cox there and nick aglin in cart number 55 Aglin, who actually dominated the last round of the championship in Queensland, he's back in no man's land at the moment. He'll need to, to pull his socks up if he's going to get to the front of this race because uh, the leaders are pulling away. So the revolution entry of uh, Pontello. Let's dicing Cox. with the Tony Cup. Let's Cox down the main straight there. Aglin in the ROAX6 slots, at, the slots in behind them as well. So they make their way through the chicane in front of the pits. And uh, Gary Dan on the back of Mark Winterbottom now. So Dan, who's made the switch from uh, PCR to Techno Karts for this weekend, um, he's, he's really going forward with Winterbottom in his sights. Race track in brilliant order. Weather conditions here in Melbourne, perfect. 
ideal temperature for racing and uh, the traction that these carts the tires can generate is extraordinary at the best of times but in conditions like this they are really sticking yeah that's right so they make their way down the main straight braking from probably 120 123 kilometers an hour that's their top street speed down the main straight down to somewhere around 40 or 50 kilometers now in less than a second so it's it's really physic very physically demanding on the drivers troy hunt in 20 has uh, raced into second place on the racetrack lozinski in cart seven relegated back to third he's being hounded by winterbottom he's got a problem lozinski Win uh, the hand lozinski throws his hand up i'm not sure what the problem is there we'll see if he continues on but lozinski certainly dropped back troy hunt's moved through and Ledzinski's managed to keep it going, so whether he had some sort of uh, temporary problem there, whether a throttle cable temporary came loose or something like that, I'm not quite sure, but he's managed to keep going, although he is dropping back through the field with Dan and getting past him and now under siege from William Yarwood. Yes, the techno driver, Gary Dan, South Australian, moving forward. And you now, or just a moment ago, had a shot of Troy Hunt in 20. Here he is, back with us again. Been a great drive by him. Starting in the top half dozen or so on the grid, and he's really driven in a swashbuckling fashion. Has thrown caution to the wind, too, to find himself uh, up where he is in this event. Has been very aggressive. Yeah, that's right. Troy's not taking any prisoners, and he's got Clark in his sights, and he'll be driving that car as hard as he can in order to get to the front. So we have a look now at Yarwood. He's closed in on the back of Ledzinski. Very peculiar. Not quite sure what the problem was with Ledzinski. He threw his hand up a couple of laps ago to say he was in trouble, but he's managed to keep that number seven PCR going. So, uh, so yeah, certainly I would... wouldn't be happy about it either. He's no. a competitor like the rest of them. And uh, well, he led the race early on for the first half lap anyway. He did, yeah, oh. makes his way past as Clark gets up onto two wheels. Very spectacular stuff from Clark. Very talented driver, but it might look as though the cart's out of control. It's certainly not. He knows exactly what he's doing, but he won't want to do that too often. Uh, it's it's not really a problem for him. We certainly didn't back off any when it happened. No, that's right. In fact, uh, that's probably what caused it. The, the cars generate that much grip that if you turn, uh, you keep your foot on the throttle in a tight corner, the car will actually buck and hop because there's so much power being generated through that chassis and the, and the chassis just flexes to such a degree it throws the car up onto two wheels. You're watching the Arrow driver, 55, Nick Aglin, another driver that hails from New South Wales. That's right, Nick, who won uh, just about all there was to win last year. Uh, he's really struggling this weekend in uh, cart number 55 there, right behind Chris Cox, a 1997 Oceana champion, and Joshua Pontello. Yes, Pontello has the best of that battle. I remind you, though, they are a long way back in the field. Another super slow-mo, which reflects the, the attitude and the precision driving required with these carts. That is Troy Hunt in 20. You just see how the cart flexes and moves around so much. The carts actually subject the driver to over four G forces, which is four times the driver's own body weight. You can see his head and body just being knocked around, such as the grip that these carts generate. He makes his way up the hill. 100 cc, uh, two-stroke engines, producing about 30 odd horsepower, and uh, that power's got to be put to the ground. That's done through those tyres, which generate the sort of grip to to subject the drive to those sort of forces. In comparison to uh, so many other motorsports, karting uh, inexpensive, but nonetheless, if you wish to compete at the top level of Formula A, it's, it's still pretty serious money. It is. Um, you can race club-level karting in any one of 100 tracks across Australia as Winterbottom goes through the inside. Great move. So Winterbottom now making his way forward. But, yeah, to compete in the top level, the Wins Australian Championship, it's, uh, well, it's well into five figures, let's put it that way. Now Winterbottom... Getting down on the seat, tucking himself in behind the steering wheel, trying to break away from Hunt. Hunt's a racer's racer, though. He'll come clawing his way back. And Winter Bottom, keeping a nice tight line, will drive defensively until he sorts himself out. Great effort by Winter Bottom, who's been very good this weekend. In fact, very consistent for the whole series so far. Yeah, Hunt tried to get back on the inside of Winter Bottom, but uh, couldn't do it, and that's cost him time. Winterbottom, who finished only 7th or 8th at the last round, has really got his act together this weekend in Melbourne, and he's now in second spot. Wonderful uh, camera work from our boys. Getting in nice and tight. Looking back through the field, that's Daniel Richard and cart number 90, need, leading Clinton Dive, and Chris Cox, who touches the back of Clinton Dive, and that'll cost Cox. His nose cone has come loose, 
and he'll have to make a pit stop for a new nose cone and, and that's effectively put him out of the race. So it's a tragedy for the Newcastle driver in cart number 77. Just that one incident there costing him big time. David Clark, the leader in this 32 lap final, sponsored by the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. It's the Formula A finale, if you may have just joined us, and that was Lazinski. We saw travelling sideways, a Looking. replay of the nose cone incident. Just a slight, slight uh, miscalculation on the part of the driver, possibly dive break that that millisecond too early and uh, and Cox has hit the back of him and lost the nose cone, so that's cost him badly. We remind our viewers around Australia that the fourth and final round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship to be staged at the brand new multi-million dollar facility, the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway in Sydney on the weekend of October 10 and 11 if you live in Sydney, or even if you don't. Get yourself out to Eastern Creek, you'll have a, a fantastic weekend of very close motor racing. October 10 and 11, the fourth and final round of the series. Yeah, that's the grand finale of the series as Dan makes his way back on the inside of Hunt. Both drivers in uh, very different configure uh, cart and engine configurations. Gary Dan uh, with Techno Perilla and Troy Hunt with uh, Top Cart Coma, I believe. Um, with the Bridgestone tyres, Dan on Dunlop tyres as well. So, uh, yeah, they're running very different setups, but still quite competitive on different parts of the circuit. Man out in front is David Clark in uh, cart one, the Victorian driver, CRG mounted. And he's doing uh, as the other two have done previously today, leading comfortably. In fact, I'm surprised by the, the winning margin in the major races this afternoon here at the Melbourne International Karting Raceway. But there's no doubt about it that the battles further back in all races, particularly for the minor placings, have been just brilliant. That's right, as we look at the battle for, I believe, its fifth spot between William Yarwood and fellow Queenslander Malcolm Heath. Malcolm's really done quite well this weekend, just on the outside of the top five and looking for a way past uh, Yarwood in the CRG. Plenty of CRGs uh, entered in the Winds Australian Karting Championship, as there is the Technos and certainly the Top Karts appear to have the strongest representation and one or two Arrow entries around too. Yeah, it's great to see such manufacturing involvement in uh, the premier karting series in Australia. It's, it's where the top drivers are, without doubt. It's Yarwood now in fifth spot, trying to get away from Heath, but Heath's not giving up on him. It's been a really good drive by these two so far, and uh, looks as though they're edging closer uh, to the guys in front of them. Making their way through the double right-hander. Got to be very gentle through here, through the left-hander, absolutely flat out over the top of the hill as they make their way onto the main straight. Meanwhile, Clark out front is doing it absolutely easily. He's uh, been the class of the field all weekend. It's his home track, the Form West Australian, now based in Melbourne. See the engine blowing a big puff of smoke indicates that the engine's running nice and rich and it's not in danger of letting go. He's tuning the engine uh, on the run, as so many of them choose to do. Been a big drive by this man, Clark, who's inside his last racing lap now before he takes out the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A finale here at the Melbourne International Karting Raceway. Don't be confused by all that. Well, Clark's done it easy so far uh, in comparison to the other drivers. He has been the class of the field this weekend. He's looking around, waving at the spectators. This, is, this has been a superb drive. Winterbottom's done exceptionally well. He's in second place, but the battle for third place between Troy Hunt and Gary Dan, that's going to go down to the wire as we pan across and take a look at them in just a moment. Meanwhile, it's David Clark who's going to come across the line to take the win. And does so comfortably. Check and flag on display. Clark emerging a very comfortable victor in second, Mark Winterbottom. And third, the driver of car 10, Gary Dan. Good drive by him. Troy Hunt, by the way, was fourth. He fought all the way down to the check and flag. William Yarwood rounding out the top five ahead of Malcolm Heath and Nick Agland. All highly entertaining karting action at the Melbourne International Karting Raceway. And there's the point score for you at the completion of three rounds now in the Formula A class. David Clark on 151, then Lozinski on 129. Ten points further back is Troy Hunt, still very much in the hunt. Nick Agland is your next man on that point score. Thanks for joining us at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway and welcome to round four of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. First up on the program, the Bob Jane T-Marts Junior Intercontinental A final. And no surprise to see Neil McFadden starting on pole position, the driver of Kart 59. Beside him, Ricky Occapinti, then Adam Graham, Daniel Elliott, Peter Hamilton, Marcus Dud Liddell, 
And New Zealander in this field too, we should point out, he's qualified 12th fastest behind Slade, Grant, Lanham, Hobby and Harrigan. A terrific race this will be. There's no doubt that McFadden has been the form driver in this class all year as we go racing for the first time in a national championship event at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. And young McFadden in the skilled engineering top part has led them out of the start as they get through the first couple of corners safely. I'm joined in commentary this weekend by Ryan Briscoe, the current CRG Team Europe Factory Formula A driver, who uh, right at the moment is leading the North American Karting Championship. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks. It's great to be here. Um, it really looks like Neil McFadden's getting away to a good start. He's trying to get away pretty quick. Um, Got yeah. a big gap uh, between he and his man in second spot at this stage. This Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway, a wonderful facility, no expense spared. As we watch these drivers in the junior intercontinental a, continental a final sorting themselves out. The great thing about this circuit is there's many different configurations. The uh, the promoters, the owners can utilise. There's a pass, as we see Okapinti sliding up on the inside, the driver of car 32. That takes him into second spot, and he'll now focus his attention on trying to run down our race leader. But the configuration, the length of the track this weekend for the final round of the Winners' Championship is around 1,200 metres, and uh, it's one of the great things about this track that so many different configurations can be put into place. The action is tight. McFadden, Okapinti and Adam Graham. That's the top three for you. This is a 22 lap race. And I uh, hope you're going to enjoy the highlights of the final round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. Through the left hander. And they run up a short straight before going through a quick left, right flick. And McFadden is the man they've all got to catch. That's been the case right throughout the 1998 season. On screen in 66, Adam Graham keeping a nice tight line and he's got a bit of pressure a couple of drivers will be commencing their challenge on him pretty soon it's like uh, Peter, Peter Hamilton's kind of behind uh, Daniel Elliott putting on a bit of pressure you've driven carts uh, all over the world how difficult is the Intercontinental Lake Park? oh it's quite different to the uh, Yamaha classes the tyres are a lot stickier the engine's got a fair bit more high performance as you saw these engines the piston port ends they have clutches so they do the standing start which that's a bit of excitement. Okapiti doing a good job here. I reckon he's starting to reel in with McFadden, the race leader. Obviously, the question is, how hard is the leader pushing at McFadden? Speaking of him, there he is on screen in the skilled engineering entry. What a season he's had, the young man, and conducts himself as a great ambassador on and off the track for karting. But there's Okapiti. I reckon the gap between first and second is about seven or eight metres now. And Ricky, I reckon, would be backing himself to put in one heck of a show here. There's plenty of traffic further back in the pack, though. The move with uh, Jamie Carter passing Andrew Hobby, looks like there's a fair bit of good racing going on up the back. But uh, up the front, I think uh, Neil's looking pretty confident. He certainly is. It's important to get away to a good start, and he continues to do that at every round, every race meeting he undertakes, for that matter. But Dell, on screen momentarily, they're starting to pack up further back in this race. McFadden, the winner of the pre-final, and uh, started this race on pole by virtue of that. That's Wade Lanham, the New South Welshman, driver of the CRG cart, number 52. Reasonably good crowd in at Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway this weekend in almost perfect weather conditions too. Indian file formation. Oh, of the drivers um, getting a little busy. And that's the scrap to which I alluded a short time ago. Slade in two, finding himself under siege from James Harrigan. Harrigan uh, driving a Tony cart. And look at the action. It's fairly frantic back in the pack. Okay, it looks like uh, a lot of things going on up the back. Um, it looks like pretty good passing manoeuvres going on. It's good track for passing. Um, it's not always that easy with such uh, close performance between the different carts and engines. But, um, you know, people make mistakes and see a lot of things going on, a lot of passing maneuvers. It's one of the great things about karting, isn't it, Ryan? The fact that uh, driver ability comes into play so much because uh, the majority of the carts are very evenly matched in performance and, and specifications, obviously. Yeah, for sure. You have to be totally focused. I mean, as soon as you go a bit late into one of the corners or lock up the brakes, as we can see there, it's really... He's just jumped straight off the track, so... Uh, 
you know, it's you got to be totally focused and not make any mistakes. They're very twitchy too. Uh, you've got to drive with so much precision, and otherwise you'll pay the ultimate price. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they are high-performance engines, and there are quite a lot of G-forces, and you know, it's a lot of force on the body and and on the mind too. Comments from uh, Ryan Briscoe, who currently is the leader in the North American Karting Championship, the young Aussie doing great things overseas and uh, was the 1996 Oceania champion as well. And I should mention that event will be staged here at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway in late January 1999. That is a wonderful battle. You're watching Tim Slade leads that pack in cart number two. They're a fair way back in the pack though, it's got to be said, because McFadden is still the man up front. Small, nice move on the inside. And now Small will attack Slade. It is very busy in this race. Yeah, and it looks like Steve Bosnowski up there behind uh, James Harrigan too. So another change of positions as another driver executes a slingshot move on the inside. James Small, I think, could be looking pretty good. He won the uh, Oceania Championship last year, I think, in Melbourne. So. He's got a lot of things behind him. Small is uh, now past Slade. There's a nice close-up shot of him. There's the top three. The way they're running on the racetrack, though, it's Neil McFadden, Ricky Ockerpinty, and Adam Graham whipping in the top three in this 22-lap Bob Jane T-Mart Jr. Intercontinental A final in the final round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. If you may have just joined us, this is the brand-new Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. What a facility it is, too. A credit to those uh, people at the helm. And the action is still thick and fast. Slade in cart two finds himself yet, yet again under siege from Harrigan. He's been involved in a very busy race. Young Slade, the South Australian in the techno cart. Jeffrey Grant in 19 also tacks onto that battle. So a three-way scrap now. They're not running inside the top three. They're racing for pride more than anything. Yeah. Up the yeah, inside. Oh, uh, problem. James Harrigan with uh, Slade, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Gee, that's not good. He's broken. He might get the uh, mechanical flag up to into the pits. He may well do. You'd hate to see that, don't you? They're all doing such a good job. But that's actually a difficult part of the circuit. The corner is slightly off camber as I charge down the hill. And uh, it's possible the driver on the inside has just washed up a little. Yeah. Which has created the problem. And that's uh, Jeffrey Grant who's gotten through cleanly, and Jamie Carter and Andrew Hobby, I think, too, they've moved up a couple of positions. So the series has been to South Australia, to Willowbank Raceway in Queensland, to Melbourne, and now at Eastern Creek. This is the first of three finals. You'll see on today's program Andrew Hobby in the PCR entry, Cart 18, moves up another spot after uh, managing to find a way past. Cart number 41 being driven by Peter Hamilton, another New South Welshman in the Mike Cart. I must say the, the Mike Cart is not um, a chassis that I'm overly familiar with. There's plenty of them on display. The Arrows, the Technos, the Tonys, the PCRs, the CRGs. A lot of uh, manufacturers involved in this great sport. And uh, that's a very healthy situation for the state of world karting, not just here in this country. There's Hamilton on screen. You can see Hamilton a couple of corners back. He was bouncing over the track, so it's like he might have a couple of chassis problems with that cart. But um, no, the Mike cart over in Europe seems to be pretty good. It's getting bigger and bigger. There's McFadden. He is the man that's had an all-conquering season thus far, and it's going to continue here in the final round at Eastern Creek. He still leads Pinty and Adam Graham, the top three on screen for you. He's so smooth, this youngster. And you might just like to explain uh, to the uninitiated watching the program what the drivers are doing when they uh, choke the engines. Well, that's uh, a process which is just cooling the engine because uh, the en these engines, they rev to about 16,000 revs. So they're getting very hot and just putting, choking the engine, it's sending a lot more fuel through the engine, oil, which just gives a nice cooling. It just cools it down a bit. Replay of the Queenslander, Adam Graham, and uh, looks like fun. I'm not so sure that he feels that way about it. It probably cost him some valuable time. The chequered flag is looming for McFadden, and he takes it. 
comfortably, emphatically, you'd have to say. He defeats Ricky Ocapiti, Adam Graham in third. There was no change in the way the top three were running on the racetrack for most of that race. But congratulations to the skilled engineering driver, Neil McFadden, has carried all before him in this Wind Australian Karting Championship of 1998 and a thoroughly, thoroughly deserving victor of this championship. He was the winner, Jamie Carter, finishing second in the title on 164 points. Look at the gap between first and second. Then James Small, 143 points. Ockapiti, Harrigan and Slade. Neil McFadden, winner of the uh, Bob Jane T-March Junior Intercontinental A Championship and the Wins Australian Karting Championships. Congratulations, that win makes it four from four. You must be very, very happy. Yeah, very happy about that. Uh, it's good to win four out of four. I don't think that's been done before. And it's good to have good sponsors like Skilled Engineering, especially Mr Arthur Fowler for all his continued support in my racing and Top Kart, Coma, Kart One, all of them have helped me all through the year and it's just been a great success. What to now? You've got uh, the Oceana in uh, late January at Eastern Creek next year. Um, moving up to uh, Intercontinental A into seniors or will you stay with juniors? Yeah, actually I am moving up to Intercontinental A. I'm too old to run the Oceana in juniors, so I'll move up to seniors and see how we go there. It's been an interesting year. You can uh, have a bit of a smile now. It's been fairly tense for you all year and you haven't, we haven't seen you crack too many. Yeah, well, a bit of pressure around, but it's all over now, so I'm very happy. At Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway, we welcome you to the final of the Cardoz Magazine Intercontinental A event. And we're going to take a look at the grid for you right now. Our pole sitter is Jamie Wincup, the current points leader too. Beside him, Brendan Dive, then Alan Gurr, Michael Caruso, Barclay Holden. And uh, you can see as you run your eye down the board, the top 12 on the racetrack for the commencement of this 26 lap Intercontinental A final. Not far away from the start now, traditional rolling start. For these carts a problem for the driver of 31 Jason Burns at the back of the pack had his arm up but uh, hopefully that will be rectified as they say go it's green light conditions at Eastern Creek great start by Wind Cup he really got away very smartly and look at these drivers sorting themselves out as they cover the first couple of hundred meters of this particular race Alan Gurr moving up on the inside trying to challenge for the race lead but you'll find Wind Cup is a comfortable leader on settling down or maybe not that comfortable run now it looks like uh also, Michael Caruso is putting a lot of pressure on uh, Alan Gurr there, but so close it's hard to say what's going to happen. Caruso, something of a contender for outright victory in the championship coming into this weekend's finale. Wind Cup only needs to stay where he is, though, and he will take line honours in the inaugural Wins Karting Championship. Great action from the Intercontinental A carts. We saw the junior Intercontinental A drivers on the circuit a short time ago. Just explain the difference between the two classes in simple terms. Um, well, they're both 100cc engines, but the, uh, these cars here, they're reed valve engines. They've got quite a lot more high perform performance, but um, especially in the bottom end, they just power straight out of those tight corners, and uh, they got, they're got really fast sort of cars, those. Good action up front. The top three, you could almost throw a blanket over. It looks like they're starting to get away from uh, fourth place, which is Brendan Dive, I think. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be good. Wind Cup as you lead up, back through the left-hander at Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. See, they're not mucking about the drivers, these drivers up front. Second is Alan Gurr in 19. Wind Cup stretches the lead slightly. Plenty of pace in a straight line, that cut. And Gurr tucking in behind. Further back on the circuit, running third is Michael Caruso. He's got a big job to do in this race. Great move up the inside, showing plenty of ticker. He caught Gurr slightly unawares there. Yeah, they had a bit of contact there, and then uh, Brendan Dive uh, tried to get round Gurry, but... Um, Let's have another look at it. it. Inside man is Caruso, car two. Look at him drifting the rear end. Contact between he and Alan Gurr. And just a couple of seconds after that, Caruso actually put his arm up in the air, I think, to acknowledge to Gurr or to apologise for giving him a, a rather short shift. Here's Gurr back up on the inside. Well, this is spirited racing at Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. The positions, second position anyway, swaps again. Now, whilst this frantic dice is going on for second and third on the circuit, it's going to play right into the race leader's hands. Wind Cup, he can just plot along out in front and run his own race. Yeah, Caruso just then, he was pointing ahead. I think he was indicating to a uh, dive behind him that he wants to catch up to a uh, wing cup but here we go another move it looks like a great race it is a great race no doubt you'd like to be out there wouldn't you yeah i'd love to 
But if they start to pack up, Wind Cup is our race leader. He's not on screen at the moment, would lead this bunch by about 10 metres. That's Gurr, who was running second. Now he's back to fourth and hasn't done a lot wrong. He's uh, just come up against some very aggressive competitors. In 35 is Barclay Holden. He's a Queenslander driving the Tony cart. Caruso maintains his position at the pointy end of this pack. Now in car 15 is Brendan Dive trying to make progress. He did slip back to about fourth or fifth early in this race. It is uh, comfortably inside the top three for the present time. And there is the top three, Win Cup, Caruso and Dive. Uh, this has been a great advantage for uh, Wing Cup with these three up the back. They've been battling, passing, and that's just costing them time all the all the while. Uh, Wing Cup is just building up a great lead there. It's good, taking to its advantage. Indeed. Caruso is very busy at the office, and he's being hounded now by Brendan Dive, who's uh, driving a Birrell cart. Caruso in the Tony entry. Not a lot between them, as you can see. Bruce, just having a little look behind there to see how close Dive was. Making sure he won't go around him, but a lot of pressure. Nice slow-mo action. A replay as they work their way through the tight left hander and the left back wheel, the inside back. Lifting, all move up the inside. Contact between Caruso and also Brendan Dive. Both of them keep it on the black stuff. And uh, meantime, that's allowed Gurr to move somewhat closer to Brendan Dive. Gurr is running fourth at the moment. Here's a chance for him up the inside. He Dive uncompromising in his style there. Tried to slam the door shut in his face. But uh, a good move. There's plenty of passing in this race anyway. The fans uh, couldn't possibly be disappointed in the action here so far. Oh, that's great. Uh, is that uh, Clayton Pine? I think he started towards the rear of the field is coming up really hard looks like he'll have a good race the pine uh, driving the auto one tony cart comes from a speedway pedigree in fact there's barclay holden and uh, i mentioned a while ago you could throw a blanket over three drivers that were involved in the great scrap you could throw a tally ho paper over this lot they're even closer together another chance up the inside 15 is Brendan Dive, and he is diving all over the place, driving defensively. It looks like Pine moved up another position, going really good, it's very fast. Yeah, he's got a, a lot of talent, this kid Pine, in three. Was able to get by Dive. Dive will keep coming back at him though, he is a racer's racer, and uh, another driver making good progress here is Clint Cathcart, the Victorian in part 48, started a long way back on the grid, driving the wins entry and he's now worked his way up to be inside the top five let's watch this battle now as dive moves up on the inside of pine will there be contact indeed there was and pine's not happy about it a gesture there with the left hand which immediately came off the steering wheel that's racing really it was just a, a lack of racing room momentarily performance of this race of clint cathcart has been very impressive too in the meantime that's him in 48 behind Pine and Dive. And also Brendan May in 89 starts to join into this battle. Well, this has been probably one of the standout races of the Wins Championship in 1998. Thoroughly enjoyable. And it's great to see carts on television. That's a great move by Brendan May passing Cathcart there. On the topic of him, I've heard rumours that uh, Brendan and his brother Wesley might be going to the supercars, the V8 supercars next year. I'm not sure about that, but I've heard rumours. Okay, so uh, a little bit of a scoop for you from Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. Dive, let me a body language by the driver of 15. Let's take another look at this through the left hand up and uh, the left rear wheel comes off the ground probably by half a metre. Getting plenty of air under the cart. Now this battle between Dive and Pine intensifies. Well, that's really payback time, isn't it? Pine, rather aggressive move to get by Dive there. Dive chooses not to uh, to give him the, the three-finger salute, as was the case with Pine a couple of laps ago. Another look at it. Dive in 15, trying to maintain his spot on the racetrack under increasing pressure, and Pine really barrels his way through to move up another spot. There was no big pardons there, uncompromising stuff. It looks like uh, Brendan Dive's card. It's really working for the maximum. It's got a lot to do with his height, I think. He's... Uh 
Bates just pushing the cart right to the maximum. And there's Brendan May, who's just gone straight off the track. Yeah, in 89, was just pushing too hard and uh, takes an unexpected off-road excursion. Now we see some action of our race leader, Jamie Wincup. The Victorian driving a techno entry. And, uh, well, that shot certainly shows the gap between he and his nearest rival on the racetrack. Jamie Wincup, barring mechanical failure or unforeseen circumstances, is going to get home very comfortably in the Cardoz Magazine Intercontinental A Final. Man in second spot is Michael Caruso, and that's him now on screen, followed by Clayton Pine, and it's been an impressive performance by Pine, a second-generation driver, the son of Ron Pine, former national super sedan champion in Speedway. And he started from position 11 on the grid, so it has been a, a very solid performance by Young Pine. And there's Gurr, who's never been far away from the action in this race in been, 19. He's been there all the time, but um, I'm sure Jamie at the moment up front, he'll just be trying to keep his engine as cool as possible, choking it at all times as possible. And uh, you can see there Brendan Dive still being very aggressive. He is a racer, isn't he? Sure is. Cathcart also there. Ooh, a problem. Fortunately for the driver, was able to get it back onto the racetrack. And uh, not too much damage done there. Just cost him a bit of time. And Gerd just going backwards a bit there. He might be having a few problems with his tyres. I'm not sure, but doesn't look too good. Looks to be a problem with uh, a lack of grip, which is not that strange at this late stage of the race. They're working very hard, these drivers. Yeah, the tyres are getting extremely hot at this stage. They're probably getting up to about 90 to 100 degrees. So, I mean, they're getting extremely soft and soggy. Conditions here at Eastern Creek are, are pretty close to being perfect today. Not overly hot. And uh, in 48, Clint Cathcart, the Victorian and the Arrows, now uh, works his way to the front of this pack. They're outside the top three, though, I remind you, in case you may have just joined us. But it is action worth looking at. And I think that's... Uh, Matthew Wall there on the Dunlops, he's uh, going pretty good too. Pressuring Brendan Dive. I reckon Dive will be glad when this race is over. He's been copping it from all over the place, hasn't he? Sure his heart rate's right up there. <laughs> exactly. Pretty physical too, karting, we should, uh, should point out, as the inside wheels of Tyve again lift off the ground. But uh, it's not to be underestimated, the physical difficulty in doing this, is it? No, I mean, it's not a smooth ride. There's a lot of bumps on the track and you're always just being bashed into the seat and stuff. It's, I mean, they're probably not noticing it at the moment, but after the race, I'm sure there'll be a few bruises. Absolutely. Not far to run in the Cardos Magazine Intercontinental A final in the final round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. Dive once again. Uh, the seeds from Brendan May in the Tony Kart. Oh, Dive crosses up, and uh, he crossed up probably with an engine seizure of some nature because the car has stopped completely on this final lap of this final of the Intercontinental A. Just one lap, or about 1,200 metres to run for our race leader, Jamie Wincup, and there he is. He is cruising, he's got time to look over his shoulder. He's already saluting the crowd, and by virtue of this win, he'll wrap up the national championship in this class. He takes the chequered flag, defeating Michael Caruso very easily, it's got to be said. Clayton Pine, big drive by him, coming from position 11 on the grid to, uh, to finish on the podium. And we'll now check the final points in the series for you and win Cup a comfortable victory on 227. Back to Michael Caruso, then Alan Gurr, drivers very much involved in the battles today. Brendan Dive, Clayton Pine, the next man in the Wins Australian Karting Championship Intercontinental A Final. I am very pleased. Uh, as I say, everything's going very well for us this year. Chassis is excellent, engine's excellent. I we made the right tyre choice with Dunlop all year and it's been a good year for us. We've kept out of trouble for most of the year, but it's been good. You, uh, a bit like Neil McFadden, you've been fairly tense all year too and a bit hard to crack a smile, but you must be able to go and celebrate now after all this. I have been. It's been very tough. You never know until you never know you're going to win until the final and it's, um, I'm glad it's paid off for us. At the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway, we welcome you now to our coverage of the Formula A finale in the final round of the Wins Australian Karting Championship. This will be quite a race for these pedigree karts. Ryan Lodzinski will start on pole. Gary Dan beside him. Then Winterbottom and Clark sharing the second row. Pontello and Chris Cox starting out of positions five and six respectively. 
Troy Hunt and Wesley May, Agland, Dive, William Yarwood and Peter Lahane whipping in the top 12. This should be a terrific race. Keep your eyes on Lazinski. The man that's leading the championship heading into this race is Clark by 32 points. Needs to finish in the top 10 to secure the title for 1998 as they go racing. And best to begin was our pulse to Ryan Lazinski, who's been a real powerhouse performer in Formula A right throughout the duration of this championship. Second on the circuit is Gary Dan, so they're racing up front the way they started on the grid. Lazinski first, Gary Dan second, the South Australian. Let's try and pick up the third driver for you, Mark Winterbottom, who started out of position number three, and David Clark runs fourth. So really, it's running true to form at this stage. And I'm joined in commentary by Ryan Briscoe, who earlier today conducted a demonstration lap on this circuit. Uh, obviously, it's a great track to drive on. Oh, it's an excellent track. Oh! Sorry to interrupt you there. <laughs> a problem for Mark Winterbottom, who was running third, He'll uh, now find himself in about seventh or eighth spot. Yeah, um, I was driving around on the track. It's really good track to drive on. It's fast. It's got a few slow corners. Excellent track for racing on. A bit of everything, you mean? Yep. Gary Dan under siege. All these carts are moving around a little, and uh, obviously the tyre's not up to maximum working temperature just yet. And that's one of the most difficult parts about any form of motor racing, isn't it? Letting, uh, keeping your adrenaline under control early in the race when your tyres are cold. Seems like an unusual thing for uh, David Clark to be doing is he's only got to finish in the top ten in this race to win the championship. So I'm not sure what his uh, tactics are for this race, but um, I'm sure he's trying to take it a bit easy. You'd think his philosophy would be self-preservation, not to do anything silly. Uh, at the moment, he finds himself in the middle of a monumental battle so uh, he'd want to be a little cautious. There's Lazinski, our leader. Clark drifting out, looking for an outside pass. At the end of the day, he's a racer, and uh, he'd like, like to make progress and get up front and tackle Lazinski. Also involved in this scrap is Troy Hunt in the Cup 20. We'll get a look at him in a moment. He started from posi number seven on the grid, so he's done a good job to be up running about fourth or fifth at this stage of proceedings. He's uh, doing exceptionally well on the bridge stones as well, because I think the top three up there they're all on Dunlops which seems to be at this race being the uh, tire to have Troy the first Bridgestone in the field and Nick Aglin behind him in the uh, Bridgestones too. Lodzinski is the leader in seven next man through Gary Dan driving a techno entry he's a South Australian driver and then of course David Clark the Victorian in the CRG the current points series leader in this championship and hope you're enjoying the highlights. Possibly a change of lead coming up here because Lazinski is finding himself under increasing pressure now from Dan, the South, As South Aussie driver, who's uh, full of determination. And right behind him is Clark. There's the top three recapping them for you on the racetrack. And they're driving a, a configuration this weekend at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway of about 1,200 metres a lap. Which is... Um, a comfortable distance, really, for these Formula A drivers. There's Clark choking the engine. And that is a great battle, Ryan. Yeah, I'd like to see what Winterbottom's going to do, because uh, a couple laps ago he was forced back. But uh, as you can see, David Clark there choking the engine again. He's trying to keep it cool. I don't want any problems happening. We spoke uh, earlier in our telecast about the G-forces these drivers are subjected to and those slow motion replays really show the, the head movement the neck the body shaking around in the seat it isn't easy oh there's a problem two of them veering off the racetrack right, that's uh david clark there well he had to finish in the top 10 to win the national championship and he may have blown it for 1998 he has blown it well your heart goes out to the the young driver meantime lozinski continues this battle with dan dan looking fairly relaxed in the seat you can hear the uh, tyres really working, the braking there. Always sliding around and it's really good. We just had uh, word come through from officialdom here at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway that Clark, in fact, seized an engine. Well, that makes it even that much tougher to accept for the young driver, who, I repeat, only had to finish in the top ten to win the championship. An engine has let go, and subsequently his championship aspirations for this year are gone. It's bad luck for Mark Winterbottom too, because he was moving up, and uh, I think Clark's just sees straight in front of him, and they've both come straight off the track, so 
It's not good for him. With the demise of Clark, we'll uh, just check for you the equation in the championship. As they run on the racetrack, Lodzinski is going to uh, find himself in a very commanding position if he wins this. He will beat Clark by probably half a dozen points or so. I'll check that for you at the completion of this race. Lozinski must have heard me because he's starting to stretch his lead a little on Gary Dan. Back up the main straight they run. Then back to the man in third spot, which is Nick Agland, another New South Wales driver, driving an Arrow AX6 cart. That's him now, tucking down behind the steering wheel in an effort to try and maximise uh, his aerodynamic effects. Troy Hunt, I've, uh, I've always raced against him. He's always been a very hard racer. And uh, I'd like to see what he's going to throw at Aglin. Yeah, Troy, in fact, uh, joined us as, uh, as a guest commentator at the previous round of this championship. Staged in Melbourne. <coughs> and uh, he's a fired-up determined race. He's quite right. And he's looking to try and work his way past his driver. In 55, Nick Agland, which effectively will put him third on the racetrack if he's successful in doing so. You can see them using uh, all he's the ripple strips there. Hunt goes through on the inside. Sorry to interrupt you. You were saying about the ripple strips. Yeah, they're just using all the track they can find, just taking it right to the edge and jumping over all the ripple strips they can find. Using all of the track and then some more. Brzezinski, Dan and Hunt. That is now your top three as Hunt has been able to get by Agland. And that battle is starting to hot up yet again. No rest is there. Oh, motorsport, karting no exception. Up front, Lazinski continues to lead Gary Dan. They're both out of shot at the moment. You're watching the strap for third and fourth in the Formula E final. And a good strap it is too. They're separated by about a metre on this 1200 metre Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway. I think I'm correct in saying they can come up with something like 20 odd configurations, 26 in fact, at this racetrack. And that makes it highly innovative, highly user friendly. You can come out here, you can hire carts, you can have good fun with your mates, you can make it an official Grand Prix if you want. They've spared no expense on the electronic timing equipment. It is a great facility. Lazinski, leader on the left hand side of your screen feel very spaced out now it's just the front two and then uh third and fourth and uh can't see back to fifth it's a long way here we go joshua pontello in 27 wesley may behind him pontello uh, a new south wales driver contesting the event this weekend of what you have to now describe as his home track may in the energy cart next on the circuit Another New South Welshman, that's him driving cart 39. Plus you've enjoyed the action that we've uh, been bringing you right throughout this year with the Wins Australian Karting Championship, the inaugural staging of this tournament, which has been so successful and will be back, back bigger and better than ever in 1999. I'll get my teeth back in my head now, right? So this is the battle for uh, fifth position. Joshua Pontello, Wesley May and Clinton Dive. And... Uh, they're throwing everything at each other. Pontello started the race from uh, posi number five on the grid. And uh, at least he's a consistent runner. Still finds himself fifth on the road. And that is him now on screen. That's a revolution cart. And the revolution carts are, well, still striving for success in a big way on the Australian karting scene. Is that a diplomatic way of putting it? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're working very hard. They race at all the European races. And uh, you know, they're always sort of trying to get better and better which is what life's all about if you can Agland now in 55 battling away with uh, Troy Hunt Hunt did get the better of Agland a short time ago so Agland has come back again and that's the battle for third and fourth on the racetrack up front is still Lozinski and Gary Dan and Agland and Hunt sideways as they enter the left hander here at the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway and the super slow-mo again reflecting the G-forces these drivers are subjected to. Last racing lap now for the Queenslander, Ryan Lodzinski. On screen, the PCR entry, and leading by a very comfortable margin to his nearest challenger, South Australian Gary Dan. There's no stopping Lodzinski in this race, and there's no stopping Lodzinski 
in the national championship, particularly due to the unfortunate demise of Clark, who went out with an engine seizure early in this race. Clark is still going to finish second in the championship, though. Lozinski about half a lap, make that a quarter of a lap now to negotiate of this 1,200 metre. Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway, he takes it, and he is the Formula A champion for 1998. Coming home in second, Gary Dan, solid drive by him, and Nick Agland, who worked hard to fend off the challenge of Troy Hunt. Let's check the championship point score for you at the completion of the fourth and final round as we look at our championship winner in Formula A, Ryan Lodzinski, a very happy man. He got there by a slender margin, five points in the end, 189 to 184 of David Clark, then Gary Dan, Troy Hunt on 155, winter bottom, and then we go down to Nick Aglin, finishing six in the Wins Formula A Championship for the year. Ryan Lodzinski, congratulations. Winner of the Eastern Creek International Karting Raceway Formula A Championship. You must have had a great surprise seeing David Clark on the sidelines because that's what you needed to win the title. Yeah, it was good when I seen him sitting there. I knew he had it won and we tried, to, tried real hard all weekend and got the pole position and won a few of the races, so it was really good. The pressure was pretty intense there. Gary Dan was right on you for a number of laps, but you came through at the end. Yeah, I could hear him behind me, but I didn't want to have a look back and see where he was, so I just put my head down and kept going. Bill Heath's a long-time supporter of yours. He's unfortunately ill this weekend. What was his reaction when you told him what had happened? Oh, he couldn't believe it. He was real happy. He was real good, considering he's got a bad leg and that. You know, it's really good for him to, for us to get the win. Now, what's, uh, what's up for next year? Are you going to come back and defend your title? Uh, we're not too sure what's happening next year, but we think we'll be back.